Fala's Father's Day is just around the corner, and our friends at Manscaped are here to ensure all the father figures out there are looking daddy material this June. Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0, which includes their signature Lawn Mora 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from head to toe. This right here is no dad joke. Dad joke. Treat him and yourself and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With this exclusive offer, get 20% off and free shipping with the code CURFEW at manscaped.com. Trust me, his dad bod will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CURFEW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using the code CURFEW. Shake what your mama gave you. Nah, shake what your daddy gave you. Fella. Hey guys, it's Matthew Kachuk here, and you're listening to Missing Curfew. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to get through this thing called life. And if the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy. Welcome back to a fresh episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien. And I'm Scotty Upshaw. What's up, Bob Dog? Ah, Memorial Day's come and gone. We can now wear white pants again. Yeah, I thought about I thought about wearing white in here today, but yeah. I don't know. The camera, you know, I wear black for a reason. Yeah, I'm not I, fooling anyone. I everyone the, knows why I'm wearing black. I move the white pants from the far side of the closet right on over. Yeah. A couple jars. Oh, this is your time to shine, baby. Know, break out the pinks, break out the yellows, break out the light greens. The salmons. I might the jump, on, jump on Good Life and grab a couple new tarps. I did. I wanted to tell you I did. I finally nice. did it. A lot of V-necks. A lot of V's. A lot of V's. I got a pink V, a uh, light blue V, uh, just like kind of a light green V, a couple white V's, and then, of course, a couple black V's. Well, after a trip to the Bahamas, there's no there's no tan lines anymore, so you could just rock whatever V you want to watch. I didn't have my tarp on very much there. I don't care. How was how was Baker's Bay? It was it was a spectacular place. Um, shout out to my our boy, John Jaffe and Javi. Jaffe, um, what a... Legend. What a well, great word. That's what I called him at the end. I was coming back. We John flew, Legend. Yeah, we flew through his plane, and I was trying to catch my plane back to back here because my boy Cramper from home was here. So we clear the. We, I'm the first person to clear customs, and the U.S. Customs lady's like, "I'm all clear." She's like, "You can't leave till everyone." And I'm like, <laughs> I swore at her. U.S. Customs. I go, "What the fuck do you mean I can't go anywhere?" Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I did. And then she like looked at me, and I'm like, "Sorry, I shouldn't swear at you, but like, I'm trying to catch a flight. I literally just cleared customs." I can't leave without these other people. Like, what are you talking about? And then another girl came around. I was like, you're good to go. This, wow. like, this, like. Um, it was a little touch and go there. Yeah, custom. like, I was trying to dig to get I to my. I don't think you can fuck with those people. I was already through, though. Oh, yeah. Had my bags, and I was going out the door, and she's like, sir, you can't leave. I'm like, what do you mean I can't leave? It was kind of like Binger and Max here trying to get in Edmonton last week. They didn't let you fuck boys it. in? They let Max through, and then they looked, and well, Binger look, had another fuck. fucking... Then that Binger comes by with the hair and would the you smile let, and the stash. <laughs> and next like, thing you know, they're like, pockets. wait, you two are together, and the one fucking chased Max down. She, he was already, I was out. already out. I was already, he was already out. out. The, they brought like, her back here. And just the out the, almost to the street, and the lady came chasing after me and said, you're with that guy, aren't you? And called me back. And I had a lunch to go to, so I'm like, hey, fuck, I might have to jump in my own Uber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so you're like, me, I got a boy. You're like, sorry, boys, I, gotta, I had to catch a flight. I'm like, Jaffe's like, just go, just go. I didn't, how did I not hear that story, by the way, boys? That's something we should have talked about. But um, it's hilarious, by the way. I mean, look at Binger. You're and dead like, fucking heat score anyway. Like, like, Binger, <laughs> Binger, have you double-checked all your pockets and your bags? Here? Now, now they're going to bring out the old rough the dogs, bud. Yeah. The dogs are coming. I was stressed. I was stressed. I know. I was church back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was stressed well, listen, in my backpack. Listen, yeah. You never know what the hell you left in the old pair of Levi's. Or the ones that you bought at the fucking Goodwill place there, right? You never know what's in the back of that little that You never little know what the, You never know what the last guy left in those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it might be something you could use, though. That's Speaking about checking the pockets, I should have kept my mouth clothes i didn't check my pockets nearly yeah. enough um but anyways great place jaffe's a beauty you'll love this we played i didn't bring my club House, did you uh, jump in the water that's all the, the I, ocean all i did oh that's nice I did mean, you it, swim too oh swimming? buddy oh, yeah, it was nice. unbelievable at oh, night it's a dream there that it's like I, a bath water i don't love the ocean especially after this morning there's like well i was on the east coast but there's sharks everywhere in the east coast right now heads up in nantucket there's a great white chomping really yeah so oh. i'll be the water the sand um i was in there all day all night it was unbelievable negative ions baby. it was great the one day we were we were gonna go see the pigs but it was storming over there so we just went to the sandbar pulled up 
drinking tequila out there, you know, the whole crew of us. It was it was amazing. But oh. Baker's a beautiful spot. You'll love this. We played. Uh, I didn't bring my clubs because I didn't think we we're gonna play lots of golf. It would have went under. We played seven holes. What? Seven holes. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. That's I it. think you just go out and play golf just for fun. Like seven holes. Seven holes. Seven How'd holes. You play? Uh, I had these like <laughs> rental clubs. I hit the driver great, just, uh, but the irons were a little. So it was a straight fuck. Fest. But you played there. <laughs> <laughs> you played there. What's we the, just kiboshed the, the golf here. Can we just? Yeah, the par three. Uh, the par three. I believe it's ten. Do you remember Baker's Bay? Uh, Where they have the little hut. It's right, yeah. literally the tee box is right on the water. Yeah. You stop and get a little. Yeah. 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 yeah on the yeah. Outside. Uh, that was my ten favorite is the hole. little par three uh, up against the water yeah. on your left. Yeah. That was my favorite hole out of the seven we played. I couldn't tell you any of the other ones we played. <laughs> nice. We went to this hole and that hole and this hole. Jaffy's a beauty. He's boats. Like, boat the one day was awesome. Yeah, nice. What kind of boat? Ah, uh, great question. I don't know, but or... anyway, shout out to uh, Jay Green. This Jay. guy. This guy took us out of the boat. He started listening to Missing Curfew. He's the guy from uh, what do you call uh, the people from the Bahamas? Bohemian. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're called, right? The yeah. locals, Bohemian? Bohemian. 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 So he's a Bohemian. Um, and now he's a fan of Missing Curfew. So we have one fan in the Bahamas at least. Sweet. Yeah. And I wanted Let's to tell see. you that I forgot to tell you this too. I the, the flight from uh, LA to Fort Lauderdale, I was wearing that exact shirt you have on, but black. Two people. Hey, Missing Curfew. Where's the up dog? Fuck. Yeah. Sorry. Ah, oh, fuck. I should have came. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got a new fan in Bahamas. Yeah, nice. It's a beautiful place, up dog. Um, I will never be able to afford it, but John Jaffe's a beauty, but it's just not easy to get to, clearly, right? I mean, plane, trains, and automobiles. No, and that's what makes it special. Yeah. A lot of those places. Tough to get to once you get there. It's like ass. Yeah. Um, Renee, uh, what's her name? from uh, Wager? Yeah, no. The other one. Reese Witherspoons. Oh, Re- yeah. Reese was on yeah, our boat over. The, yeah, she has the place next to Chester. She was on our boat over. Um, Dustin Johnson was hanging out there. Paulina. You didn't hit any drivers with that guy, did you? No, but he was heading to the range one day. I went fucking flying by the range on a golf cart heading to God knows where. And I was like, <laughs> oh, there's, there's DJ. I'm like, wow, he's actually going to play some golf. But um, the pool area, it was That's pretty sick. cool. It was pretty cool. So. How's the food? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't tell you. Had a club house sandwich That's last good, day. Eh? A club house sandwich last day was pretty good. Sashimi. No, we had nice. good sushi. Fresh fish. Um, great fish the one night. Uh, good steak. We had dinner three nights in, in the, like, the main lodge there. Yeah. Um, got a few complaints. I think, Jaffe, you got a few complaints. I'm sure. That's yeah. what the... Yeah. yeah. No one's really complaining. I think they were complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were complaining. Uh, I think he, he's going to have to rent another house next time he goes, maybe. But uh, uh, I gotcha. gotcha. He, you should see his place in Miami. You're right. The, the helicopter thing you're yeah, talking about, it's beautiful. Did you get on the chopper? No, we didn't get on the chopper. But it's it's that one museum. It's sick. Place, yeah, right? it's 100 it's, Museum. It's I, unbelievable. Awesome. It's unbelievable. Shout out to our boy. Yeah, so um, well, you're, you're Melbourne, you're doing a good thing. You know what you're doing. Yeah, I yeah. Drank a lot he of He sure is. He's the king. Um, yours is a little different than my Memorial Day fella. Yeah, I got a new uh, addition to the family. We the got, Upshaw uh, clans multiplying we, daily. We added a uh, a eight week old Cavapoo. Her name is Ruby. We call Ruby. Her, we call her Ru. I like Ruby. So we now have Ruby and Riley, two great dogs. I'm trying to make sure they don't fucking kill each other right now because the little one's a little horny one. She's just buzzing around. Two girls. There you go. Um, a little girl on girl action. Yeah. Off time. Yeah. So she's a great. I saw that in the Bahamas she, too, by the way. She's a great little dog. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> I saw that in the Bahamas dude. too, by the way. God, I just, wish I came. Just joking, but just um, joking. No, so, yeah, so we got a new dog. Um, you know, we spent uh, Sunday, you know, we saw the crew, saw Stu and PJ and all the kids. And anyway, we had a good day there. Yeah. Um, and then a little Friday golf. Nice. Carried into a couple of drinks, our boy Frankie, and we were kind of drowning our sorrows over the St. Louis Blues loss, you know, our boy Frankie running Rothschilds. Yeah. Big blues guy. I'm, I'm going to see him Friday night. It's my buddy Cramper who's here. I was going to bring him into the studio, but we got a busy day here. Uh, it's his, I'm going to have his birthday party Friday at Rothschild's. Nice. Is Frankie back from Mexico? Have you texted him? I don't know. I texted with him last week. Okay, good. Um, I hope he's there because I'm going to go in there and rub it right some salt in this room about the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, yeah. Can't, yeah can't I know. It, was, it was tough, but um, he's a diehard. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah, it was tough, but good weekend altogether. Yeah, it's crazy waking up, what, today, June 1. Right? June, June 1 first. I'm like, wow, it's fucking summer's here. So yeah, summer's here. Summer's here. We got a month left to hockey up dog. Maybe a month and a bit. Then we got some free agent stuff and draft. And then me and you are fucking gonna go on a little break ourselves. So, anyways, up dog, you represented our country, Canada, before in this tournament, the world championship. 
I spoke to you about Team Finland. I played in Finland, <sighs> the fans and everything. I saw a little bit of that gold medal game, but little controversy. I saw Pierre Luc Dubois' interview. He was ch- he was chapped. Yeah, I think he said. I don't know. What did he say? He said one word like 30 times. But Sucks? Yeah. Uh, was he say sucks? It just he sucks. He said something. It just, it just sucks, sucks or something. Lose a tournament like that just sucks. And I'll be honest. I uh, I watched a little bit of it. So I bet Canada. And I bet the over. As you should have. Listen, and I bet the over. And it's, three, it's fucking 3-1 OB. Well, basically, they hurt their goalie. Um, you know, he pulls his groin. Tough tough way to go out. They're up one nothing. Boom. 1-1. One, one. Boom. 2-1, one, 3-1. One, and I'm like, holy fuck. They just lost this fucking game, and they had it in their in their in their control. Yeah. So I jump from Big Canyon. I drive home. It's Sunday afternoon, and I'm asking Flowers for his Directv password because NHL Network's only on Directv, right? I don't have that at my house. So I finally get it. I tune on. It's fucking three three. Canada scores two late goals to tie it up, and I'm like, wow, we have a game. Really? Izzy, come over here. So then I watch overtime with Izzy, and I happen to catch, um, you know. During the game, I happened to see one of our uh, one of our D men lift Miro Hiskinen's stick, and his own stick hits him in the face, and we get a we get a fucking high sticking penalty. Right? I'm like, that's just kind of Europe for you. You never know what the hell yeah, you're gonna get. Exactly. Like with with European refing and just you don't know what you're gonna get, and they can't like I don't know if there's video review or whatever. So I'm like, whatever. Then overtime, buddy. It's three on three. It's fucking overtime? full three on three. Sudden death overtime. Just Chaos. in the big ice yeah. and i'm like this is awesome right but they're circling a couple good chances and i'm like this is cool because it's going to be decided three on three just fucking fuck fest out there just it's going to be good <laughs> and this play comes out into the neutral zone and it's a nothing play yes canada has his he's hooking him but he doesn't fucking hook him like where he's ripping his feet out to cause like a you know a change in possession or whatever and this fucking fin just flops i mean it was so bad. Like, Georgie Peros, probably from, from New York, was like, this is embarrassing. Georgie even find him. Georgie would have find him. Still find him. He's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to find you either way. I know you're not in the NHL. And sure as shit, they fucking go down four. It's a four on three. And I'm like, are you guys kidding me? In the World Championship final, you're going to call that penalty? Yeah, that's a joke. So then I'm like, I'm immediately like, if we lose this game right now, it's a, it's a fuck job. It's just, we're, we're getting screwed. And sure enough, they killed like a minute, minute and a half off. And then this, you know, this fucking Granlin, man, he played good. He was good, Mikael Granlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made he made a couple passes in the in that game on the power play. I don't know if he led the fucking he led the tournament in points, but he was he was a pretty standout player for for Finland. Yeah, and one timer cross cross ice, boom, game over in Finland. The crowd was going nuts. By the way, oh. that rink in Helsinki is sick barn, unbelievable, sick barn. They got the fucking the two barns they played in were the two nicest barns in the league. Temp- yeah, Tempra, the- Tempra. And how is that where uh, Kimo's from? Temp- Tempa. No, Kimo. Uh, that beauty's from up north. Okay, Kalpa or something. So like I'm that. sure Timu was there cheering on his boys, probably calling the game. But it was a screw job. Just end it like three on three, man. It's the fucking finals, right? Yeah. To me, that was just embarrassing. I would have even felt bad if it was a Canadian that flopped, and we won on a stupid power play goal like that. I would have been like, Finland got screwed at home. That's yeah. the way I would have felt. So anyone listening or whoever read my tweet where I just was like, that's fucking fuck job. Yeah. And they all came at me. Well, the game was like this. I didn't watch the whole game. I'm just telling you what happened at the end of the game. I'm just calling it fucking live while I see it. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I'm, I agree with you. A, a championship should never be decided like that. When I saw uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois' interview, I felt for him. I will say this. Um, speaking of direct TV, up, they keep calling me. I must have like a bill or something I haven't paid. I got to look into that. Um they won the Olympic gold and they won the world championship. Yeah. I know the Olympic gold, there was no national leaguers. Um, Finland's here, man. I know. I they said are. it to you and loops back in the day when I went over there on a fucking, I don't know even what you want to call it, but they have great fans. <laughs> they have great players. And I did never know that Joel Armina was finished. Did you know that? No, I didn't. He was playing for Team Finland. I'm like, this guy's finished? I thought he was fucking Plays hard. Canadian or American. Armenian? Yeah, I figured if you play for the Canadians, you got to be like, yeah, French I never Canadian. thought he was finished. I'm huh. watching them play, but their team looked big. Haskinen was they there. They looked structured. He, he looked good. Their team looked like I watched Finland play and Canada play the most in that tournament. And Finland looked how just about, as good. How about Flip, uh, Filpula? Great player. He just fucking ends his career in the international. He goes, wins a gold medal at the fucking Olympics, and then wins a gold medal at the World Championships. Yeah, he's it's a nice way to. You send could it. put him in the get slab. He's got the trifecta: cup, Olympic yeah. gold, world yeah. gold. Always looked up. He was always a, a guy my age that we battled against, and I look up to him. He's a good player. 
congrats to Finland. Um, there would have been a lot of beer drank in, fin- in Finland that Did night. Did you I'll see how many you- people tuned into the game? There was like three and a half or four million people actually viewed the game at yeah. one point, which is the most like anyone in Finland's ever watched TV, yeah. <laughs> which, which is crazy because you'd, you'd imagine with all the darkness in the winter, a lot of them probably watch Netflix or that's all I watched. Stranger that's things. all I did over there is watch Netflix. Yeah. But, uh, but no. And then, nights. and then the parade looked pretty awesome. Like congrats to that, man. That's, that's huge. Helsinki's a great city. Great city. How many, how many guys fit in that sauna, Buck Diddy and just <laughs> drank themselves. There was definitely a sauna, cold plunge sauna, Buck Diddy, yeah, they love a good song in Finland. They love a good song. So congrats to them. Um, Updog Torts, ha- apparently, while it's true, has been, has been interviewed by the Philadelphia Flyers. I personally would love to see John Tortorella back coaching hockey. Um, I have asked him to come on this podcast twice now. Both answers were, Obes, I'm not coming on the fucking pod or something <laughs> like that. But if he gets hired, I will ask him again. As a former flyer, do you think Torts would be a good fit there? I'd love to see how he uh, talks to the media. Yeah. Because they're fucking assholes there. Exactly. Like this it would Panaccio, be good TV. this guy, Panaccio, like he would just, he would get under his skin and it would be, it would be good TV. Um, and he'd be allowed to probably say whatever he wants rather than ESPN where he's a little bit tied, tied down. As the head coach, you get to swear and do whatever you want, right? Yeah. So I, I think just, he'd be good. I just remember Torch lighting up the guy um, from New York, Brooksy. Hey, Brooksy. Yeah, you were the guy that probably got beat up at the bus stop, weren't you, Brooksy? <laughs> that was one of Torch's greatest things. Um, but no, just to to follow up that, um, Philly's a, a great sports town. Flyers need some help. The Flyers need to turn things around. They need uh, they need to, you know, add depth. They need to fix, you know, we saw Carter Hart in Edmonton, but, you know, I think goaltending has been an issue. Um, they need to get back to finding winning ways. And if you look at the history of the Flyers the last 20 years, there's not much, there's not many downfalls. There's not many rebuilds. They have a bad year, Obes, they bounce back. And they're good for four or five years. So, you know, the change of Drew, um, all these guys that have kind of left there the last little bit. But just there's a lot of, there's going to be some change there. And I guess my point being is, um, you know, it's time for for our boys like Kevin Hayes and, and Atkinson, these guys to really step up and take, you know, take this team to another place because Philly, Philly doesn't wait around for, uh, you know, for rebuilds and losing hockey. They want their team to win and want their team to be competitive. JVR is still there. He's very much there. One more year at seven bananas. Fuck me. That is a nice ticky. Um, Atkinson, our boy, Kevin Hayes, Kaneki, this kid. I loved this kid. I don't know what's going on. I love him, but he has been having an off year. Lawton, um, how about Phil? Uh, how do you say his name? Owen oh, Tippett was a good pickup. Phil Barry. Uh, I fucked that name up. Who is it? Joel, Joel oh, Fairbay. 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 Joel Fairbay. He's making five bananas too. Holy shit. Yeah, he's a good player. He fights. He's, he's good. There's some pieces there. And obviously with Drew leaving, there's a, you know they have a captaincy spot. There's, there's, there's some rumors that maybe Johnny Hockey. Um, but when it comes to John Tortorella in general and the Philadelphia fans, I never thought I'd ever see Well Fargo's arena as empty as it was this year. Torts will come in there, he will rattle the cages, he will protect his players in the media, and he will play a brand of hockey that the Philadelphia Flyers fans will respect. I don't know if he makes him a playoff team right away, but I think John Tortorella, if it's not Rick Tockett, I don't think Tox is leaving TNT. He's getting better and better every day. Yeah, he he's good, it. yeah. He's fucking doing, I text him all the time, Tox, he's a big fan of missing curfew. I'm a big fan of what he's doing on TNT. So I don't know if he's left, leaving that cushy position. John Tortorella would be a great fit there. And I would love to see Torts back in. So I, I hope he gets the job. Uh, there's some, you know, our, our boy Barry Trotz to Winnipeg, I think yeah. it's a great fit too. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that fire job's a, a job for anybody. So no. it's got to be the right person. Torch especially, could be the guy. Especially coming in after a season like this. Yeah. It's, you know, it takes it takes some nuts to get and, in there. Exactly. And Torts, Torts has enough fuck you in him that he he'll probably would like that job to, you know. He pretends like he doesn't like the media, but he loves fucking with them. And he always has a plan. Like, you think people are like, Torts wants it about him. He's, and it's bigger than that. Yeah. He's doing it for a reason to protect his players. And we've had guys on. Cam Atkinson that played for Torts in Columbus loves Torts. Yeah. Right? People love Torts that play for him. So, um, it would get me cheering for the Flyers even more. So, I'm all for that. I want the Flyers to be good. Yeah. I always wanted to be a Flyer. Especially with your bunch of beauties on your team. Yeah, we had, fuck, all-time beauty team. Jesus. All-time. This is the only thing is just Flowers. It's nice to see him suffer a bit. Flowers cares about flowers. He's just guys like I mean, is he a Blues fan? Is he a Flyers fan? He's I mean, yeah, he's, he's neither here nor there. No, yeah, like 
He's but, yeah, coming yeah, in here today. Up. I might just really let him have it today. I gotta Good. be honest. Like I might really let him have it. Yeah, you should. Like I've just I've had enough. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I've had enough. I think so too. You know, you know, I think I've had enough. So towards <laughs> Trotsy, good on you. Um, up dog, we're Austin Matthews. Listen, I'm, we're gonna take on the responsibility here at Mystic Curfew. I ran it by you before. We're gonna start the Austin Matthews rumors. Uh, you know, we said the Fe- trade train. Yeah, we said Phoenix. and Matthews is on it. Yeah, we said Phoenix last uh, last week, I believe, on the podcast. L.A. Kings. I'm thinking the L.A. Kings. Maybe I've had some people on social media bring up L.A. Kings. I did some digging. Matthews has two years left on his contract, and then he's a UFA. Like, so would they I'm, trade him? Maybe now I had, get just pieces and pieces, buddy. I said this to Steve Cools. I said to Coolis. I said Cooley, if. In the last year of Matthews contract in two years, if the Leafs are the best team in the NHL at the trade deadline and Matthews is not signed, what would Kyle Dubas do if he's still there? Well, you have to trade him because you can't lose him for nothing. I'm like, you haven't won a Stanley Cup since 67. If you trade the best player in the league on the best team at that time, if they are the best team in the NHL, how could you explain that to Leafs Nation? So Kyle Dubas has put him himself in a corner where that very well could happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and we all knew that going in. And I think we touched on this earlier, and, and I've realized this for a long time ever watching, you know, always seeing Austin Matthews play, become that restricted free agent, not sign a bridge deal and not sign a long term deal, but take this deal right up to age basically 27 to see a fucking Sayonara. He's doing what basketball guys have done, he's doing what the Kevin Durant's and the fucking LeBron James have done. He is in control of his destiny. And he, not many guys have done this. No, you don't think pretty- Connor McDavid would have oh. loved to just say, like, Give me my five years and then I'm fucking gone. Or I can, or if you guys build me a great team, I'm staying, right? So Austin Matthews puts himself in the driver's seat. If he wants Hollywood, he gets Hollywood. If he wants to play in Tempe, Arizona, in front of the 5,000 college fans, he can do that. If he wants to go to fucking South Beach, New York, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. It's great for hockey. It I is. think it's great for a young guy to have the power. Yeah. I, I was all about Scottsdale and, and, or sorry, Tempe with a new building and this and that, but. I mean, we all know how tight he is with Justin Bieber. Imagine coming to play for the Kings. Let's say he signs for, right now he's making 11.6 bananas. He'll sign for 15. 15 million. Yep. Living in Hollywood. At least 15. Hanging with Bieber. That Kings team is on the up and up, right? In two years, they could be, you know, you put Matthews on the Kings this year, they'd probably beat Edmonton. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Kopitar, let's say you take Kopitar off the team in a couple years and you put Matthews there. Now you got Matthews, that French guy that I can never say his name, Philip Deneau. Yep, Kempe. Kempe. I'd like to just see him play with Kempe. It'd yeah, be awesome. I'd just like to see him play now. Imagine like the indoor. Like we talk about hockey the guy, would become really fucking cool down here again. We talk about the guy that could be maybe the, like we talked about Connor. You know, well we all know what Wainer did for hockey. If Matthews comes to LA, maybe he takes hockey to that next level where guys are starting to make more and more salaries and stuff like that. It could be game changing. Yeah. And there's a lot of fucking people down here. Hockey has been growing, but not at a pace you want to see it. The LA Kings throughout the fucking, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, winning those cups was huge for California, but need to bring it back. Need to roll it back. And I think, uh, I think missing curfew is onto something. Yeah, he, he'd look good in the black and silver of the Kings too. And then imagine him walking to Staples with a stylish guy. Fuck, it doesn't, no snow You just want to see Kyle Dubas get fucked. I, <laughs> I shouldn't either. I'm a Leafs, I grew up a Leafs fan. Dougie know, Wendell. You're, you're Dougie. Not, you, you haven't been happy how he's built his team. He's a fuck, come on, man. You haven't been happy. It's a joke. I always hear it out of you. Shanny too, Shanny, I love you, which brings us right into our next topic we're going to get into. Brandon Shanahan, I loved you as a player. I bumped into you in Vegas with Loops. I bu- Remember we had dinner with Shanny, me, you, Lund- Lundquist, Biz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I love Shanny. He's a great guy. Like This isn't personal. I think he hasn't done a great job as president either, but I don't even know what the role as a president is, so I can't trip Shanny. I know what the GM's supposed to do. Yeah. And I'm and with Dubas, how you've let your – the best goal scorer in the game right now, in two years, he could walk away and you could get nothing for him? Like, forget all the other stuff up. That's like – Red flag, no? Like, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I think the hockey world's kind of known this. So he's in this, like, let's do it. And he's in a do or die, like, situation kind of every year. Like, we got to win. Cause this, and if we win, maybe he stays. Yeah. If we don't win, I'm fucked. Well, yeah. but so is every, so is everyone. Going down with the ship, big fella. Yeah, I'm going down I'm with going the ship. I'm going down with the ship. I'm going to jump back on the Leafs bandwagon next year, maybe. I'm going to get over like how I had my love-hate with the Flames and because of Maddie and Richie being there at the start of the year. Maybe next year I will because 
In two years, Matthews is going to lead, uh, is going to the Kings. So. And then what do you got to cheer for? The Kings. Yeah, yeah. And well, that, but I, I, as a Leaf fan, right? Like you got to cheer for the Kings. That's what Look you at get. this. If he leaves town, well, congratulations. You got Tavares at eleven million. So Marner, Nylander would be a UFA then. Although he should have been, you know, he should be traded. I mean, let's look at this. They're in one. Anyways, you heard it here first. Matthews to the Kings in two years. Ops, I want to talk to you about this Red Wings avalanche. Uh, I believe it's an E60. Have you seen yeah, the trailer? I have. Old oh. Pepe's on there. <laughs> Old, Pe- Old Pe- Pepe's the whole show. <laughs> Pepe's. What a hit. It was crazy. We got to have Pepe on this podcast when that comes out. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think he was thinking there? He was thinking, I'm going to drive Draper's face right into the fucking Yeah, and I'm going to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we see his fork Stanley Cup rings up one time at the Talent Cup. He was driving on the back of the golf cart with four rings. You don't get four rings without being a prick. I know. Now, what if I drove Draper's face into the yellow dasher? Probably not. Actually, I wouldn't have. But, you know, you do stuff in the playoffs. Yeah. I, we just saw a video of you that <laughs> Princey put up that you hit this guy behind the net from Pittsburgh. Who was Jordan it? Jordan Stahl. Holy Christ, what a hit. Like, yeah. there was 22 seconds left in a 4-2 game. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. You thought, fuck it, I'm going to drive this guy in because maybe he can't play next game. Totally. So, but the Lemieux hit, as you know, is... Uh, it was bad, and yeah. it it haunted. I think it it call it haunt. He won the Stanley Cup over it, but it kind of haunted like his Claude Lemieux's image amongst you know his peers. Let's say other than his teammates, who who knows you know how good of a teammate Claude Lemieux is. And I've you know Gomer loved him. You know you talk to all any of his teammates back in the day, Marty Brodeur, they probably all love Pepe. Yeah. But I mean, holy fuck, that that message throughout the league of like, I'm just going to fucking kill you yeah, or, and do it in a very cheap way, <laughs> you know? Oh, it's a great point by you because when I first met Pepe out here, that's you all know, you think of. I went, fucking Claude Lemieux, right? he's fucking gutless, dirty prick. Got to meet him, started skating with him, obviously became friends with his son, meet Lemieux. I like Pepe Lemieux. I would have loved to have him on my team, but because of that hit yeah. and me growing you up- immediately and, hated me, him. Me and you, that's, we remember that series. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That rivalry. Yeah. I thought he was just a dirty prick. Yeah. So I can't wait to watch. I can't wait to talk to you about it. I believe it comes out in uh, July. So we'll be it able It comes to- out the start of the finals. It does? It comes out the start of the finals. Even yeah. better. Yeah. I cannot wait to take that in for you. So, Peppy, we love you, but uh, ooh, that, yeah. hit. that hit. That was the best time, too, when the Forsberg and Patty Waugh and, like, Ray Bork and fucking... You had all, like, Stevie Y, Fedorov. I mean, those are fucking legendary teams. Legend. They had skill and toughness and swag and everything. McCarty. Yeah. They everything. had tough guys. They had cool guys like Fedorov. They had Chelly. Joe Sackick. They had Chelly, Patty Waugh. Yeah, yeah. It's badass. It's sick. So That's I, hockey. I can't wait. That's hockey. That's hockey. Uh, up dog, speaking of what's not hockey, our first segment brought to you by our good friends at DraftKings is called Tea Times, fella. Tea Times. I haven't been golfing a lot lately. I've, you know, I haven't played seven holes. Played seven holes in Baker's Bay. Don't remember those. I haven't played Big Canyon in three weeks. I don't think. Like, oh no, I played yesterday with my buddy Cramper. Oh, nice. Shot eighty-two. First time I played. Fuck. Yeah, but it's a lot easier when you're just playing with a buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, your St. Louis Blues. Um, hell of a season. Factor had a hell of a playoff. You owe me a ball of Camus. I owe you a bottle. Thank God. But more importantly, Flowers owes me a ball of Camus. Looking back on their year, what do you think? Um, you know, do they have a couple more good runs in them? Perron, free agent, wants to come back, I would assume. But what's your feel on the Blues moving forward and their season? I think they, uh, I think they're in a good a good spot. I think they got great young players. Jordan Cairo, all star this year, fastest skater in the league, scored some incredible goals. Would I like to see him step up in more of a timely fashion this playoff round? You know, being the guy he is, I thought he was a little quiet in some games. Um, but, you know, he's a great guy. He can build your team around. Robert Thomas, incredible player. I, for the f- f- for a split moment in the round against Colorado, I thought because of Robert Thomas right now, the St. Louis Blues might win this, might win this round. Mm-hmm. Put Bennington aside, getting hurt, which I think fucked them. Um, Robert Thomas in game five took over the game single-handedly, um, gave their team some life. Uh, so, you know, those two guys, Obi, and you know what, they, as long as they don't sign them so they're gone at free agency, like the Matthews thing, this team is, they're going to be on the right path. Do they, you know, how do they shed salary? Um, do they look to move... 
You know, is is the binning thing Huso thing an area they can save money? Do they trade Binny? I don't know. Do they I, trade Binner? I wouldn't trade Bennington. I like Bennington all I I Huso has not showed me enough yet to yeah. think that he's a guy. They got their D locked up ups. They got Falk, Krug, Perenko locked up until 26, 27. They got Skindella for a couple of years. They got your boy Bobo for two years. So their back end is locked and loaded. Yep. The fact that he and, and Vladdy got one year left at seven seven five each. So you would think they got to sign O'Reilly here, right? Like, Yeah. So O'Reilly's got one year left. One year left. You know, the Tory Krug injury obes really hurt. The D... Is Krug being out in the playoffs really hurt them? I, I would have loved Krug to see a really him. healthy and and fuck like just tough injury. I don't even know what the fuck happened to him, but tough His injury. Knee wasn't it? I don't know. It was tough. Yeah, he had a great um, year. I love Tory Krug. I love him. David Perron gets better with age. He has been. He's a beast. I know. I I used to hate playing against him. I didn't know he's still so young. Kid's like thirty three. He's got years to play. So listen, Ups, you're right. So you got Cairo, Thomas at 2.8 for one more year. Barbershev at one more year, 2.2. Love Barbie. Walker, Logan Brown, and that Alex Torpe. How do you say his name? Torpechi? Tor- the Russian Topenko. Guy. Topenko, 750. Well, I don't know. It's not Topenko. It's something. Doug Armstrong. Torpechenko. Yeah, that's it. Doug Armstrong does not need my advice. He's got a Stanley Cup. I yeah. have zero Stanley Cups. If you'd like to just hear my opinion, I would say you got to tighten up those three and four lines there, the third and fourth line. The, the Nathan Walker kid, I like the Aussie. I like him. I would say whatever's going to happen. Now, let's say they re-sign O'Reilly, they re-sign Perron. I then think you got to try to trade Valimir Tarasenko again, even though I thought he had a great year. But if you can get that 7-5 off the books, sign Perron, then you got some more money to... to I know they had 920 goal scorers, which makes this what I'm saying. Play probably like, oh, what are we talking about? I still think they're they're bottom six. They could add a couple more veterans. Yeah. Veteran veterans. They could win another Stanley Cup before O'Reilly's done. And Krug and Falk Steels come to an end in 26, 27. They they got one more run in them, I think, Ups. I really like their I like their forwards, Obes. I, I I mean, maybe not their fourth line. But like I love Schenner. I love what he is. I love Buchnevich, fucking the guy was was incredible for them. What a pickup! I think that trade ended up working out for them tenfold. Brandon Saad, like good fill, eh. in, good fill in player, but he didn't do much in the playoffs. I've never been a Saad guy. He didn't do much, but he's got Although two. Although he's got two cups, I got zero cups, and he was on the team. I think the he might have Blackhawks teams that beat me out. Was Does he, he got two or three? He's got I think two. he's got two. Um, um, I would trade Tarasenko because you're going to get a lot for him right now. Buchnevich, great regular season. Um, Cairo, hope that he's, his progress continues. Yeah, they got a great hockey club. Yeah, it's a good hockey, hockey club. club. They can, they they can compete. Club. They can definitely compete. And they got great fans. The city's fucking, the city loves them. I just, I want to see them. Uh, I love seeing the Blues fucking playoff teams and, and, you know, continuing to get better and better. I want my boy Bobo to have another push for a cup. And, so. Great hockey city. It's turned into a great, great hockey, hockey, city. hockey city. Great hockey Shout city. Shout out to OB Clark's, right? What a place. OB Clark's, I've been there. I can't wait to get drunk there. It's a great hockey uh, city. Great fans. It's a great run. They will be back. Uh, next Tea Times, our guest here, Matty Kachuk, coming on later. Calgary Flames ups. The Battle of Alberta wasn't quite a battle. Bzzz, they ran of, into bus. It was kind of a pillow fight besides McDavid. Um, lesson, UFA Johnny Gaudreau. Matty Kachuk, RFA. Um, Magiapani, RFA. And then the rest are all just their depth guys. Um, and their back end's locked up for a couple more years. But obviously it comes... I think Johnny Hockey's played his last game. People disagree with me. I just think he's done so much. He's put himself in a position that it's once in a lifetime, man. Right, like think about it. You're, you. Have I know. I've. Our, I, I know. I. I don't need to even say it. I don't think anyone needs to say it. He gone. He done. He gone. He's gone. He's Philly, gone. He's a, he's an Jersey, American born Long player. Island. Like, you know, they're. Who knows if he stays? I'm shocked, but he gone. What about him and Barzell on Long Island? That'd be a nice line, right? Yeah, Barzell good luck did, getting the puck from them too. Yeah, but they might, they might keep it. They they need to be. To maybe too much alike. Huh? I don't know. That's just. I just think yeah. this kid, you know what? He's a South Jersey boy. 
Uh, I think he's going to, I think one of those teams in that area that I just said are going to make a push at him. Yeah. Fuck, what did the Jersey gave Dougie Hamilton what? 10 bananas. Yeah, Flyers are going to do it. Yeah, th- that whole, Flyers. That whole <laughs> division. Fucking Flyers. <laughs> that whole division is going to go after him. Everyone's going to, everyone's going to jump in on the Johnny sweepstakes, but. Yeah, I don't think Calgary's his spot. No, and then fucking Milan Luch, it's big Luch still making five point two next year. That is a nice take you there, Luch. Um, I'm sure Maddie. I don't know what they're going to do with Maddie. He's an RFA. I don't even know how that works. I guess they'll tough way to go out, huh? Did you think Coleman kicked that in? He by the rule book, he kicked it in. Did you? Th- I didn't ask you. As a fucking national that played seven hundred fifty games, did you think he kicked it in? I thought he's an idiot for going for it. As a guy that played 750 in the National League, that went to the net harder than anyone, do you think he kicked it in? Yeah. No, you don't. I do. I can see it in your eyes. He fucking kicked it in. He did not kick it in. He went to the net, and he was stopping, and the skate just fucking... He almost broke his fucking leg. Yeah, because he was stuck in the ice. He just shouldn't have touched it. It wasn't just going in if he didn't touch it, did it? I don't think he saw it. No, it was going in. He was like this with the guy on him, and it like... I didn't think it was. I was on my way to the airport. He's lucky he didn't wrap his leg around the post and Stamkos his fucking shin bone right yeah, off. But, buddy, no one went in that harder than you. You guys don't think about stuff like that. No, I don't. No. The you way the see, pegs are now. It's I like, was watching in my car ride up to the airport, tr- flying to Miami on the red eye. They scored when I got to the airport. By the time I got out of fucking checking into my flight, it was the game was still tied. And I was like, I went to Twitter and saw what was going on. Like, it's a tough it's a tough call. Like I, I would have liked to see that goal count. Yeah. But... He fucking, it's his inside of his blade. If it's the outside, it's different. Like, yeah. you go in, and who who goes and stops with the inside of their s- skate like that? That's the p- part, like, where you're like, he's going for a kick. He's not trying to, st- if you're stopping, you're stopping outside edges. You're not stopping on the inside edge like that. You would know that more than me because you go to the net. You went to the net. I don't know exactly what you're He of- sees the puck there, and he as soon as he makes a move to go on this inside edge, He's going to like direct it in with his foot. Like okay. he's that, and that's a soccer kick. If you stop on the outside, there's no way you can say it's a kicking motion. I am stopping. But as soon as your ankle turns out and it hits the inside of your skate, you put it in the ref's hands to be like, is this a kick or not? But it's your inside fucking edge. Yeah. So by the rule book, and I don't know, the fucking rule book's been, you know, snaking a few fucking goals here this year. I it's, don't know the rules anymore. I'll yeah. be the first to admit it. Saying this, it, they still wouldn't have won the series. Edmonton, no, no, Edmonton was yeah. going to beat him in six, but it would have been nice to see a game six. Yeah, I love guys going the net. Escrow would have been nice for the boys to get escrow, some escrow. Back. It would have been great. Um, Flames, I don't know. What man. a way though! Fuck. What a great year for the Flames. Though. Yeah. K- kudos to Brad Tree Living, Daryl Sutter, everything he did, the fan base there, Maddie Kachuk, Johnny Hockey, Goody, yeah. Marky. Mark, yeah, yeah, they had. I a great mean, year. they went old school hockey yeah. there. Trevor Lewis, Luch, yeah. uh, Kirk Muller. Kirk shout Muller. out to Kirky. Had no a beer one with him. Thought in the Flames were going to do what they did, and they had an yeah. unbelievable season. And yeah. they and they put Calgary back on the map. They did so good for them. They last did. but not least, well, they actually last and least. Who gives? Because Carolina Hurricanes. I mean, tough performance, game seven. Just they don't have any like. They don't have a goalie, and that poor Ranta wow. just ripped his fucking knee apart. I felt so bad for him in that game when That's he a fell. Good point by you about the goalie. They didn't have a fucking. If Freddie goalie. was in there. But listen, when I talk to you about top end talent, here we go. Ready? Sebastian Aho, good player. Shrevnikov. Then we go Jordan Stahl. Kokniemi. Neither. Taravani, or whatever his name is. Call me out with that one. Um, T- Tivo Taravani. T- Taralainen. Um, and then it's like Jesper Fast. Point being is, I don't think they have like that superstar player, right? Like Aho's making $8.4 million. Like, when I looked at the Rangers series, and the reason I picked the Rangers, and, and then people are still not believing the Rangers, you got Panarin, Zibanejad, Kreider, Fox. Like, this team maybe was the best team in the playoffs. Yeah. But you need superstars. Yeah, you do. And, Step and, up in timely yeah. fucking fashion. And I think that's what happened. I'll tell you what else happened. is fucking goaltending from New York is just spectacular. Prince Igor. Prince Igor is kicking. If you watched, I, I watched game seven pretty closely. Obes. He did not miss a save. He did not kick out a rebound. He didn't even try. I, I, bear, I bet you he didn't even sweat. He was so fluent, east-west, just blocker, catch, pad, save. Here we go, here we yeah. go. It was 
beautiful to watch. If, if you're if you're a goalie, like I know Carter Hutton was probably sitting at home watching this game because he likes to he likes style and he always says like Jonathan Quick has fucking sick style and Carey Price because the way they just move, it's like but you're like a butterfly in there. This fucking Igor in Game Seven, it was it was sexy as fuck. It was like you and Hyde back in the day. He was up yeah, and down on top was, of the booth, down of the booth, over and grabbed girls the, from the other booth, back on the booth. Anything I had in my hand, it, I caught it. He was feeling it. He was oh, fucking yeah. feeling it. So anyway, th- yeah, I'm telling you what. That's another reason I picked the Rangers because I thought without Freddie that Prince Igor, and you know what, like obviously he, he played so bad that the pressure was finally off him that he probably went, they would have lost to Pittsburgh had Crosby not got hit. I, I will admit yeah. that. However, he got hit. Right, yeah. Um, and I think Igor kind of took a breather after that, and and now he's playing the way he did. He can. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, Carolina ran into that, and then you know the not winning a game on the road. Good teams, good playoff teams, and championship teams. You win on the road. I agree. And you can't fucking win on the road. You don't deserve to win. Great point. It's a great point by you. That costs them. You got to find a way to win the road and go get a superstar, Don Waddell. Go out there and get somebody that fucking can. I, I love Aho. He's a great player, but I think they need a superstar guy that can be a game changer and they, they may get over the hump. So that was tea times presented by our good friends at DraftKings um, milk carton. Um, you guys know how much I love Mackenzie Weger. Here's another reason to love Weeksy. The Weeksy baby. I've been texting with him. He listened to the pod. He listens to the pod. Um, I just text him. Keep your head up. You had a great year. Learn from it. It's good experience. You guys will be back. How's the year-end bender going? Do you want to come on missing curfew? All this, we're shooting the shit. In. And at the end, he said, hey, don't be afraid to throw Weegsy baby on the milk carton. So, <laughs> Weegsy, this is for you, buddy. You're on the fucking milk carton, Weegsy. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just the type of kid he is. You know, it, 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 I know deep down in his soul, he's hurting a bit because he was so excited for playoff hockey, right? There was a banner of him outside the arena, and, and he was so horned up. He was up dog horned up, and I think he's going to learn from that. And realize that come playoff time up, and I'm guilty of it, and I'm probably sure you were earlier in your career too. Yep. You know, I go out there, take a penalty right away, or hit somebody, or run out of position. You learn to breathe. Don't get bigger than the moment, and I think Weezy Baby will do that. Playoff hockey is way different than regular season yeah. hockey. You can be a great team. You can set records. You can score six goals a game. Your power play can click. But come playoff time, when things tighten up, and you run into a hot goalie, and you run into a team like Tampa that has won, and their guys know how to play playoff style hockey, and you have Hedman back there, and you have McDonough, and you got fucking Bogosian who's shutting you down. It's frustrating. Their power play stunk. They have some of the best offensive players in the world: Giroux, Huberto, Sam Bennett, Ecky. Couldn't couldn't get it done. How do you get? How do you find ways yeah, to win we, games? You're not the only guy we could put on the fucking. But how do you here. find <laughs> ways to win a game if your power play doesn't work? Like it's it's hard. Power yeah. play, you need to step up and score timely goals. You can't go 0 for 26, 27, 28 in the playoffs. Yeah. Expect to win, especially against Vasilevsky. No yeah. chance. Um, so I agree. So Weezy was ba- a tough one. Weezy baby, because you told me to, fella. You're on, you're the, on, you're on the milk carton this week. He just was in Miami having time, so he's probably hung cheese and getting an IV right now. But Weezy, I love you. You'll be back, and he's gonna. Come and check in after his bender's over. So yeah, let's get him out here. Yeah, I would love to see. Let's Weezy. get him a fucking. Uh, we'll get him a ticket. I would love to see Weezy baby. Yeah. Up dog. Our next segment brought to you by our good friends at Canada Lip Boomers. I got the strawberry cough going on right now. These guys must be killing it because every time I go to order this new shit, um, it's fucking sold out. Wow, I haven't seen this one before. Yeah, this one's nice. Strawberry. <clears throat> yeah, we really gotta get this shit in Canada. I, I've been talking to these guys. Get it up there. I brought a bunch of logs up. Give a bunch to Brento. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to get them up there. Um, the West Final presented by Canadips, Lip Boomers, promo code Curfew Cali. Game one was last night. I don't know. I don't know what nice pass. I don't know what to say. Um, I didn't know what to think. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I took Edmonton in the series. Just so we're, we're getting this out there. You've right? been all so, over the fucking map on these guys. Can I want to pull up some clips from up here earlier. In the I wanted to, about? you know, I wanted to ask our guest today um, his thoughts on the dog days being in Alberta. <laughs> um, and if it's real in Calgary or if you. it's real in just Edmonton, but it's a real fucking thing up there. We got to get you a dog days t-shirt. And so Edmonton is obviously out of the dog days and they are scoring at will, but look at their first Look at the first game in Calgary. Look at the first game in, uh, here in, in Colorado. They get down fucking six goals, like, immediately. And they come back to basically compete and tie the game. It's 
it's pretty special. So, you know, I look at the game like that last night. That's shinny hockey. I'm You're texting right. Jason Demers, and I'm like, you know, this is this is men's league hockey at its complete finest. No up. one is playing defense. Me, Not yeah. a single person on the ice has has any idea what's going on behind them. They're all puck fucking horny, mm-hmm. and they're all like we need to just turn this puck over because we're going to go down and score. That's the mentality. It's not like, hey, no one's talking on the ice in the D zone. No one's like, hey, you got him. I got him. Like, can you imagine? I don't think they're saying a word to anyone. They don't give a fuck. It's crazy. You know, you know, there's too much scoring when uh, Kurt Olsen and John Jaffe, guys that are absolute beauties, California guys don't watch hockey and they're watching these games and they're like, what's going on with all the goals and why are the goalies so bad? And like, enough's enough with all the fucking goals. All right. I get it. I don't want a fucking eight seven playoff game in the Western Conference Finals. I don't. I, it's crazy. It's nuts, and nobody does. Like, so for me, first of all, the Kemp for injury. I don't know. He got hit with a fucking slap shot in the head. He should have caught it. He got hit in the head two shifts before. He was terrible last night. He's been terrible. He's probably conked a little bit. I don't. He's got know. something going on. The I eye, know. the eye thing in the first round. Is there something going on? Yeah, he's in one. Um, I have no idea how this series is going to go. Um, Do you think I, France owns it, the? Well, I said I've said to you on this podcast throughout the trade deadline that, that they yeah, should have got another goalie. Yeah. Now, did Joe try? Probably. I don't know how that works. I'm not a GM, but I would have I would have tried everything I had to get a veteran. I don't even Yaroslav Halak out of Vancouver. I would have tried to get him or Peter Morazic, who was playing bad in Carolina. Bring him in or playing bad in Toronto this year. Um, Anybody. There's got to be some other guys out Just there. Add Fleury a- goes to Minnesota. Hey, Bill Guerin, what's it take? What's it take to get Ken Talbot out of there? I don't fucking know. Give me somebody that I can have as a backup if Kemper, I don't know. I, I just thought you needed some because he's never been here. And I watched Evans play all year uppie, and he hasn't been that good. He hasn't had to be that good, and he hasn't been that good. I wonder. What I don't care like, what his numbers say. I wonder what it's like, Obi, and I don't know if you've ever been in a dressing room where you're basically like, fuck it, guys. We're just going to score more than them. Like, that's how we're going to win. We're just yeah. going to score more goals than them. We're not going to like... Hey, we're going to have a good PK here. We're going to fucking stop this one. We're just going to say fucking when, you know, when they put one in the net, we're going to go put two in the net. <laughs> yeah. It's cr- I don't know what that that philosophy is like. The coach has got to lose their mind. And what Wayne Gretzky said last night was all time. When the great one says there's too much scorn, you know, there's too much. There's scorn. too much scorn. He's like, I wish I had this many yeah. three on twos and two on ones when I played. Like even he's like, someone's got to. And play Wayne, you calm down. You did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one fucking back checked back then either. <laughs> It was funny. Talk said to him last night. He said, uh, "He said, look at Greta's uh, salivating from the mouth. Biz, wipe his mouth off. Biz is like, I already gave him a foot massage today. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not wiping his. There's too much scoring. I will say this: um, whoever digs in and plays a little bit more defense. And now I think the goaltending. We, we've chirped Mike Smith all year. I now think the goaltending favors." The Oilers, even yeah, if Kemp is healthy. I know it does. If I'm the Avalanche, I would take Koskinen right yeah. now over fucking Kemper. So I don't know how it's going to go. Um, I wanted to ask you something about Dave. Take the over. Take the over oh, on your shit. DraftKings app. Take the over. <laughs> Up, dog, real quick. Dave Manson versus John, Josh Manson. You have a beautiful daughter. You have a baby boy in the way. Like, I don't know. Like, that's got to be weird if you were... Imagine playing against your dad in the Western Conference Finals. Am I thinking too much into it, or is that a weird situation for them? Would it be weird? Maybe playing. Um, Coaching, like you got the D coach, Manson, who I had uh, for training camp in Edmonton. He was Baker's, you know, he's Bakerfield coach. Um, I think he's a great fucking guy. Yeah. I love the way he played back in the day, being an old Oiler fan. Yeah. Josh Manson's had a hell of a playoff. He's had a hell of a playoff so far. You know, he's a great pickup for the Colorado Avalanche. You ask, you know, Johnny Michael Lyles right now, that's a big reason they've... He had a tough game on minus four. No, 100%. Holy fuck. Well, so did everyone. What was he doing on the first two goals? I could have got off my couch and killed him. The Hyman backdoor goal, he tried to kick it or something. I don't know what that... Just get your stick on the ice. And the first goal, he he's a, he's the fucking D here, and he, go, he leaves the center of the ice to go to the guy on the fucking... What are you, like... That's def- defense one on one up, dog. You just hold the ball on the ice. They were a little, yeah, they were a little shaky. Is yeah. that the Kane goal, the breakaway? The first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I um, threw my can of dips at the fucking TV. Like, hold the middle of the ice, fella. They, he had a bad one. We, listen, I from a guy who's had many a bad ones, he'll shake it off. But I'm concerned. I wasn't concerned in the Blue Series for whatever reason. 
The only thing was concerning me was fucking you and Flowers were pissing me off. But I, I thought they were going to beat them. I don't know. I don't know, Uppy. I got my money on the abs. I'm sitting here telling you right now, Phil, I have no fucking idea. Like, Do you I, have an idea? I, I think, I think goaltending, I think, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be 12, 13 goals scored in every game. It's going to be, it's going to be fucking, it's going to be a You're shootout. You're going to run away with the pool. Huh? You're oh yeah, I'm pool. running away with the pool. You I mean, I got McDavid and Dreisaitl and, and I got Stammer to, be, to back me up on the East. I'm running away with it. I'm yeah. up 14 points, and then you I get know, my if, money if back. Oilers right? lose. Last place gets his money back. No. What do you I mean? No. So. What do you no. mean? That's what kind of rule is that? That's in every pool. Not Last place gets chance. his money back. Well, every you, pool. You can talk to the second place guy and see. You my guys, team is so bad. I'm know 20 it. points behind Flowers' team. His team's a joke. I think you're like 70 player points behind me. Oh right? yeah. I think you're at like 55 well, I had or 60. I had a lot of Flames players. Ah. And the first round, they scored six goals. Their whole team. Uh, Dylan Dubé didn't get me a goal. Plus a lot of Colorado Avalanche. Toffoli. Yeah, Colorado's only played eleven games. Then the Avs swept the first round. I yeah. got five of those guys. So I, I, I mean, if he goes against games played, my guys have played the least amount of games for sure. But yeah, I haven't put. I've How put someone it. let me get McDavid and Drysaddle in a nine-man league is beyond me. I also had the last pick. I was fucking, fourth. Who did the auto draft? Of I had the last pick. Flowers, of course. Numb nuts. Um, a little fun tip inside the series inside the series up dog. The head coach is Bednar Jay Woodcroft. I now love Jay Woodcroft. I said on this podcast that who the fuck is Jay Woodcroft when he yeah. got hired. Now I know who he is. He's gonna have to step up his suit game here in the Western Conference Finals. Bednard suits are National League. National Woodcroft is still wearing the ones from Bakersfield. He's a rookie. Anyone he's, that a, he's been in the league a long time. Your boy from Calgary, do you think you'd help out? What's your boy's name in Calgary that does Matt suits? Eaton, our boy Matt. You tell Matt that he should maybe fire a couple of suits together for Woodcroft for game three and four. Let's send, let's fucking, I'll See dial See if you can make you. that happen. What you, what's your next size? 60 and a half? We'll get you a suit, buddy. Because Bednard suits are just, do, are dominating Wood. Like last night, I couldn't even look he's at Woodcroft. He's got the full look. Woodcroft suits, not great. He's got a team that fucks and, you know, Western Conference fucking leading the point. <laughs> he's got good hair. Great hair. You know. He's running a good ship, <laughs> and he's got fucking, you know, he's got the pinstripes going. Yeah. Looks good. Do you think you're an Alberta boy? Could we get a clothing company to get Woodcroft a new suit for game three and four? Something yeah. you should look into, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, we already got a guy. Maybe we got a Maddie. guy. We got a guy. Um, what was that up, dog? That was uh, the old West Final. Western Conference Final presented by Canadips. Uh, moving on to the East Final presented by our good friends at Good Life. We already talked about the fucking V-necks I picked up. Promo code Curfew. Curfew. You should get some new ones too, but you're probably decked out in good life already. Uh, no, I need some freshies. You do? I like to have a couple fresh tarps, you know? This is a series that if it goes seven, I, I may try to convince you into going to game seven in Madison Square Garden. I may try to convince yeah. you. I may. We grab maybe just Maxi with a little camera. No show. We just go. Madison Square Jungle. And we just fuck. He just, Madison Square yeah. Jungie. And he just, we go to due west, and then we go here. I don't know. Maybe we can do it. Um, The, range, the Rangers are playing better than people thought. Their power play is clicking. Prince Igor, but Tampa's rested. Tampa is... They got a tan. Not as good as my tan, but they have a Tampa tan. Tampa Bay Vasilevsky. That's their name. I got Tampa in game one tonight. I'm taking them. This is... Two, what are we recording? Wednesday. I'm going to mm -hmm. take them. Um, you also took the Lightning in the series. You took them in five, so you think it's going to be a short one. How I come do. so? How come so short? I actually thought they had home ice, so my bad. It's okay. So did I. My bad. So They're gonna I. have to win three fucking games on the road here. You could change that to six. I changed mine too. So That's up okay. dog, you would have taken them in six had you known, because I didn't know either. I thought the Lightning did. I just don't think. I just don't think New York's seen the the goaltending they're going to see yet. And power play, click, whatever. You got to find a way to score. I, I think they haven't seen defense like Tampa's. They are not good. They haven't seen I anything know. like this. Beast. I know. So you know, Coop's been sitting in the weeds, ready for either Carolina or New York. You know, it's you know they're fired up to be in the Big Apple. You know, Stammer's fucking licking his chops, sitting on that one T spot. You got Kucherov, who's you know he's ready to start playing again. He's probably been drinking beer the last four or five days. He's licking, for sure, right? They're gonna he's, have a, the Tampa Bay Lightning are gonna have a nice tan in game mm -hmm. one warm up. I guarantee that with their buckets right. off, they're gonna have a nice tan. They've had a week off. They're in the Florida. champs. Champs. Fuck. I will say this: MSG, MSG is gonna be rocking. Yeah. To the Rangers fans out there, kudos to you guys. That barn is back. It's fucking loud. Um, Carolina fans are great, but I, I'm happy it's Tampa Rangers, MSG. It's gonna be a great series. Coops are boy. I got Lightning. Turks our guy too, though. I know. Jordan and Lance Turks great. got them going. Uh, Jack Adams award here. You heard it here.
Jack Adams to fucking Gerard Gallant. Yeah. That'd be a second one he won? It should be his this year. I mean, give fucking guy gets hosed both places. Now he goes to New York and takes <laughs> these guys to the conference final. I mean, come on. If there's a game seven, you want to go to it? Yeah. Okay. 100%. I don't know when that would be, um, but maybe we'll go to it if we go seven. Mm -hmm. 100%. That'd be fun. Zip in and out. In and out. I'm in. All right, fella. Um, that was the Eastern Conference Final. Game one tonight, Wednesday night, presented by our good friends at Good Life. Promo code curfew. People in Canada, you can get it. Summertime, the lake, get the good life going. They got some nice bathing suits, too. Nice short shorts, trunks, too. Swim trunks. If you got the, you, know, you don't want to have any tan lines high up on those quads. You get the nice short shorts. Kind of get, get the up dog leg going, like show her off, show her, show her off. <laughs> um, it looks like DraftKings top titty has come to an end. There's another great successful it season was a of nice, top titty. It was a good run again. Yeah. A lot of tits. Um, maybe we'll get Princey to, uh, maybe you boys can tally up how many top titties me and Updog missed over the course of the year. Next week, we'll talk about that maybe. I think Updog missed more than me. I'm going to go on a 100% I did. Not 100%. It's closer than you think. And I will, uh, I'll it's, bring in a bottle of fucking hey, whatever, JMO for the It's boys. closer than you think. Is it? I missed a fucking ton too. Yeah, but add, it, add another 10 on that for me. I bet you it's... I, I'm going to say it's under... I wasn't perfect. I'm going to say it's five each way. Like, I, it's close. My ADD was coming into... I missed every Friday because of golf. It's close. I know. But to our fans, to DraftKings, thank you for guys doing that. It's fun for us. If, if for listeners who haven't done it next year, get involved. It, it's cool. It makes you pay attention to more games. It doesn't cost a whole lot to get involved. Um, and then real quick, up dog before we bring on Flowers here for his... Uh, weekly segment or every other week segment we did a little stanley cup boost tampa colorado in the finals i picked them i know you got the oilers so you let me pick this um so go check that out on DraftKings. you get a yes, little sir. boost better odds 100 percent. let's go baby that would be a great fun i mean tampa colorado great final tampa everything great final i mean even if the rangers win i mean the nhl is in a great spot with these last four teams right yeah yeah they are it, it couldn't have worked out better yeah i said this too after uh, carolina lost i'm like this could not have worked out better. You have, you have McDavid, McKinnon, and Drysital, and call it McCarr, and then you have over here you have Vasilevsky, Stammer, and fucking just put, you know Adam Fox. Yeah. Boom and Igor. Totally. And Vasile Did I say the Vasilevsky? Because yeah. I mean, look at it. It's I, it's the two best goals in the league. It's it's I great guess, uh, pairings. Two best players in the league in the other one. And real quick, uh, Nathan McKinnon, who you know I've become buddies with over the year. I've texted before the playoffs, go get him, fella. Obviously, I've left him alone since. But his fucking press conference where he said McDavid's the best player on the planet, and then he said, all I care about is more viewers because of escrow. Yeah. What a line. I agree. And for play people out there on my social media or on our social media that don't know what escrow is, go do some research, fans, and realize what these players have been paying out of their pocket to pay the owners over the course of the last four or five seasons. Go check out escrow with what it is. You'll have more respect for these players and how much of their salary they really give back. Yeah. Right? Or they don't get. They don't get. Yeah. Fuck escrow. Fuck it. We're going to make a t-shirt that says fuck escrow. Yeah, too, I up like dogs. that. Up dog, always a pleasure, buddy. Have you in the studio. Ah, a little rundown, rundown, yeah, Western rundown. Western Conference Finals, Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, can't wait to watch Tampa, New York tonight. We're recording on Wednesday. Our next guest, our boy, no, he's not. He's a not even. A, he's a fella now. I'm calling yeah. Matty Kachuk a he's fella. A fella. Um, you know, we obviously watched him. Love watching him play yeah. all year. He's going to jump on here with us. He's got a big tea time at. Uh, yeah. So let's get. What's the course? They're playing, they're playing Old Warson. Oh, sick boy, track. Yeah, yeah that's great, what Prongs remember. Great course. Uh, that's where the fact daddy lives, right near there. Um, Sweet. So I'm sure. Uh, let's get him on quick so he can go tee it up with the boys. As the boys call him on the Flames, Chucky. DraftKings, baby. Oh, dog, they're everywhere. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What a time of year, hockey fans. The pursuit for the Stanley Cup is on. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner, the NHL, has an unbelievable offer for most exciting playoffs in sports. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. Updog, looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during playoffs? Hell yeah. With DraftKings Same Game Parlay. You. you can just do that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more. It's your shot at even bigger payouts. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can just deposit and withdraw your cash 
whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Curfew Kings. Kings. Bet $5 on any NHL team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's code Curfew Kings at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up dog, my man. This guy's not even a guest under a friend of the show. This guy's one of the fellows now. Yeah, this he guy's is one a of the fellows. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Maddie Kachuk, how you doing, fella? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, always, always a blast talking to you guys. And yeah, I feel like I'm uh, been a little bit of a regular on here. So I'm seeing seeing a couple of posts of you know the family. You've got Brady on here a lot. A lot of content from him. So. Yeah, I feel, feel like a regular now. We, yeah, we get some good banter back and forth from the Kachuk boys. Yeah, we? yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, Brady's a beauty. And um, I guess we can start there. Just just how great was it having your dad and your brother and, and just your whole family around? Like, when I was watching you play, like, I, I saw your interview before game seven of the first round. I want to talk to you about the first round. But you just said, like, this is going to be the best atmosphere I ever play in. And, and it looked like you wanted to play in that game so much. How nice is it having your bro and your dad in the building? so cool and um yeah i think most of them you have know, traveled a lot of them came to game six in dallas that we'd lost but my brother wasn't there for that he was in napa he kind of had a little bit of like a world tour going on after his season so he was bouncing around a few different cities and then came up to calgary for game seven and i mean you guys know like game sevens are probably the coolest thing in in hockey especially when you win it so um there's nothing like it and I, that was my first one so to have them there um, made it so much more special. And um, the fact that we were able to win and have a couple days after made the whole night. And we were walking down like the red mile after going, um, you know, to a couple, we went, we had to get dropped off because it was close. We're walking through with all the fans and kind of getting mobbed for a block or two, like the whole family was, (laughs) they're probably more famous than I am in Calgary, my family. So it was all really cool experience. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We'll get to that game seven in a bit because there's a bunch of questions I want to ask you about that. But are you a guy that, excuse me, are you a guy that notices like what's going on in the crowd during a game? Like, did you know where your brother was sitting? Did you know, like, could you, could you see kind of the antics around him, like holding the baby and like carrying the beers? Cause it was, Um, it was a spectacle on TV. It was, it was, it was quite awesome. amazing. It was awesome. I, I wish he was mic'd up. I wish that <laughs> I, if I could have added one thing, I would have liked to, to hear a little, like actually what was going on up there, but I know where they're sitting, but I don't really notice stuff during games. I'm, I try to be, I mean, I said that I tried, I mean, you notice, you know, random things throughout the crowd. I'm sure yeah, you boys Alberta know exactly fights, what I'm talking yeah, about. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah, um, but they, uh, yeah. Um, so he, uh, I, I didn't really notice too much of this stuff, but second period, like when we're shooting there in that end, kind of by the, uh, the Zamboni there. And I do remember Luch was on the bench and he pulled me, pulled me aside, like after the intermission or maybe after one of the games, he's like craziest thing happened. Matthew. Second period, there's nothing going on. We're down one, nothing or two, one buildings, quiet not really like, you know, we need some energy kind of like, there's, there's nothing going on in the rink right now. Nothing going on in the game pucks in our end. So the opposite end of where we're sitting and I must've been on the ice. Cause he's like, I heard a huge roar from the, uh, from the, the Zamboni side. And I look and it's Brady walking up the steps <laughs> to his row and he's getting everybody going, doing this with his hands. And like, it's like slowly standing out. And I'm like, oh my god, I can absolutely picture that. And then I, I notice that the next few games after that, when he was there, every time he walks up, when he goes like the bathroom, goes to grab a beer, fans go nuts. It was crazy seeing how excited they got to see him, and he kind of just did like he played into all that too. So oh, yeah, I think my parents, awesome. I think my parents were like a little bit like, I pray enough, so enough to play like the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're like, well, you're a captain for like another NHL team. We just around a bit, but he loves it. He loves it. <laughs> No, hey, hey, Maddie, we saw him. We came up for game two, and he was nice enough to stop by and, and say hi to the boys. And you could tell he was done. He's like, he's like, we're like, you going to Edmonton? He's like, fuck no, I'm going home, and I'm done. I'm starting to work out. So you could tell that he left it all out there for you. Oh, he left it all out there. He he said he said the main reason why we won game seven is the energy he brought. So I guess I'll uh, I'll agree with him. But I, I will say, like, 
I know I, I didn't hear really about it, but he was kind of telling me that, you know, people are, you know, some people were like all over him for it, like saying like how like it's weird he's doing that. Like, you guys kidding me? Like, I mean, we're brothers, we're family, yeah. a close family. Like I would do maybe not the same things but because he's an absolute menace, but um, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be right in there if he was, you know, if our, we swapped lives or whatever. Like I'd be at his games and yeah, um, totally. it's not like he was, it's not like he was wearing like a Calgary flame. Jersey. I mean, he's wearing, you know, his Matthew, the truck shirts and stuff like that, just supporting me. But um, I mean, he wanted to see a, uh, if it was his team, not in the playoffs, he wanted to see a cup parade somehow. So why yeah, not exactly. mine? So it didn't happen. So, Hopefully one day. Totally, and and real quick, I said to him like, how much is this motivating you seeing Maddie in the you know in the Stanley Cup playoffs? So so for those Sens fans out there, like that's how he's looking at it too. Like when he saw the energy in that building, that's going to fuel B- Brady this yeah. summer to work harder. And he is perfect. He's the perfect type of player for that type of game. Like he is the perfect playoff hockey type of player. Um, so hopefully they can, um, you know, grab a few guys around him and. Yeah. Um, a couple of those guys can can dial it in too because I know Brady leads the charge. So hopefully they can pick up some pieces and um, be a be a playoff team out east. Matty, we, we, before we get into the Dallas series, just tell our listeners what we were talking about before. Like, you know, I was joking about for me, I, you know, after you lose a playoff round for me, you know, I go on my year end bender. I don't really think of anything. I get back to California. I'm kind of over it. Like, tell us what you kind of you know are going through right now and how you feel and how you're feeling now and and what's motivating you once the off season starts. Well, I think that right, you know, the night it happens, you're just really frustrated. And um, I know for myself, just try to try to get over it as quick as possible, but it's really hard to. And then, you know, as a day goes by or a couple of days go by, you do, you know, your couple of nights with the team, with the guys, and you're not really thinking about anything other than, you know, spending some time with them because you know you're not going to have the same team. That's kind of one thing that sucks about this year is the group we had was – like by far the best that I've been on. So that was more just, you know, enjoying the nights with them and uh, honestly not really thinking about just enjoying time. Um, But you're still, you know, a little upset coming home, whatever it is a week later. And anytime hockey is still being played, it sucks. I will say. So you kind of don't really get over it, I guess all summer, but especially not till the cups handed out. But you know, once, once the cups handed out, I think about a week after that. So we'll call it mid July. I'll, I'll finally get over it and, so I think about next year. Yeah, let's dive into the <clears> – <throat> um, I just want to talk about the Dallas series, which, you know, to me was one of the biggest surprises for for me in the first round. I thought as low score – like as 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 high octane uh, you guys were in the playoffs – or sorry, in the regular season, especially you and Johnny, um, just how tight that series was played. <clears throat> and then the difference in, yeah. you know, your first round to second round. But bring me back to like – you know, these these tight games, one nothing, two one, like just grinding, full defense, you know, playing two two goalies that are both on their game to like switching it up and then all of a sudden it's like an offensive outpouring. Game one of, of the second round is is, you know, a touchdown. But just just like the the mental grind of a playoff series that's low scoring, super defensive, couple overtime matches, like just what that what that sort of series did to you guys uh, mentally. Well, I think that for our team, you know, we, we felt that we could play any style and that probably was the style that was going to make us successful were those low scoring games. But I know for, for John and I, we weren't totally used to that, um, you know, after the, the regular season and everything, but after, you know, game one and two, they're both one, nothing games. Well, I guess game two, they got an empty netter, but it was one, nothing games <laughs> to start the series. And you're like, well, can't really get to the net right now it's like impossible (laughs) to get a shot on goal let alone (laughs) score here but uh honestly i think that dallas and we said it throughout the regular season we pride ourselves on playing great defense and hard defense making it hard to get shots get to the net and if you know if i felt we were the best they're second best that team like their defense are so you know big physical and maybe other other than that high skin and clinger but they obviously are very special players but they're so hard to play against their whole deep core, their team defense. They were always a five guys. Like we were, I mean, we were joking around not during the season because it was so frustrating, but it was hard as hell to get to the net against them. Like they were sealing out in the corner. Like you couldn't even get past the blue line against them. It felt like, and um, that was different. And then you're talking about this, the difference going into game one Um, Edmonton's a completely different team where they're all speed. They're all rush. And I think we probably, 
were a little surprised at how, I mean, how much easier it was to get offense against them. But in the same sense, playing Edmonton, you make one mistake or you're not above or you give them one on man rush, you know, it's probably going to be in the back of your net. So two very different series. Um, pr- looking back on it, we, we probably, we definitely should have played more like the Dallas series against Edmonton or really tried to, but I think after the, probably the worst thing that happened was having game one being that high scoring against Edmonton and us winning that was probably, <laughs> probably the worst thing for us yeah. um, to be honest, because then we opened it up and um, now we're here now. Maddie, on that Dallas series, I, I figured they were going to give you a, a, a series. A lot of people had you guys in five and that. I, th- I think I took you in, in six or seven, but I figured it'd be tough. When you see a guy like Joe Pavelski and what he's still doing, and and you love going to the net, were you just watching him and and maybe still picking stuff up against him throughout the series of, I got to get to that blue paint. That's where I'm going to get rewarded in this series? Absolutely, and he was producing for them. He was probably the only guy that was producing offensively for them, especially at the beginning of the series, so... Um, he's always hungry around the net. I think the best part about him is during playoff time, goals are scored by tips, rebound, just scraping around the, the front of the net. And he's been the best player in the NHL for his whole career in the playoffs at doing that. So um, he was somebody that I definitely loved to watch during the regular season and didn't like to play against during playoffs because he knew he was going to produce. But um, definitely look up to him as a player. He's been a great player and he still is a great player. Um, and I think that that was one like you just said, big lesson for myself and the rest of the guys to learn from a guy like him and, and how to produce in the playoffs and just how to play. Did the boys notice the blonde behind Rick Bonus in game? What no? What game was that? Was that game three or what game, <laughs> what game was that? That she was that was yeah. That, we that, got, you know who that is, right? right? Yeah, it's Paul Connery's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> did the boys notice her? Of course they did, right? Of course. Um, <clears throat> I, I can't speak <laughs> and if we noticed her during the game or not, but there was definitely You're all like, over huh? social media after. And then um, obviously <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> known beforehand or saw and hey. somewhere. I think it was Instagram or Twitter that there was going to, she was going to be there again for game six or game yeah, four yeah. or whatever. So hey. I think, uh, yeah, the Dallas players i'm sure those guys are pumped right behind the bench there's enough distractions in big d with the ice girls the girls in the crowd in general you, <laughs> you stick a blonde behind the bench like i would have been fucked i would have I, like, I would offer seats behind i would have put her behind the flames yeah, bench, though. i would have stuck her behind the stars bench i would have been like here you go oh it's pretty funny too because i saw that uh i saw that um obviously that happened in dallas and then before game five um in calgary um cowboys you guys yes. are very familiar with them. Oh sure. yeah. Um, sent in like five, I don't know what's called. They sent five, in the artillery. Five, sent, of, the, five pretty, of the girls and put it behind. Pretty Edmonton good line. Pretty good line. Pretty good line. If you ask me, <laughs> but, but I was thinking about it. Cowboys is like the club is shut down right now. still because of COVID stuff, like the actual club. So I'm like, they must have like went around <laughs> either knocking at doors to find them, like where they're, where they've been or, um, cause like that place is closed. So, I'm sure the owner of Cowboys just sent in some of the old ones that used to work there, but I don't know. Pretty funny. Yeah, they've been, there's been a lot of that in this playoffs. I'm sure the the business, uh, you know, for the, for those females, those five that were there, they're probably looking to get back in the, yeah. in the swing of things. So they're, <laughs> so they're like, let's start here. Well, Summer's yeah, just around the corner. Stampede's around the corner. Let's get the girls back out on the tube here. Yeah. Next on the couple yeah maybe, maybe it was a stampede little, um, you know, publicity move, but would have been great if we would have kept winning and that would have been like the turning point for us that series i would have been very happy <laughs> yeah very happy for that to be the turning point that would have been funny yeah when i found out cowboys wasn't open when we were coming up there i almost had a meltdown it was supposed to snow before game two cowboys was closed i'm like fuck are we really yeah. going up to here to calgary here boys as much as i love maddie and the boys <laughs> but um maddie i, I want to ask you about the last thing on the Dallas series is a, is the game seven where you guys just peppered and ottinger played unbelievable all series and so did marky but as a guy that was sitting on my couch that had money on you guys to, to win the series, I was nervous. How were you guys feeling when you're throwing that much puck at them and you can't score, and next thing you know, you're going to overtime? Like, what was said heading, heading into overtime? Well, I don't really want this to sound like, you know, like cocky or arrogant, but there was not one point in that game where I was like, where I had a thought in my head like, oh my gosh, our season could end. But yeah, like, yeah, there was yeah. not one part of me that thought about that. I was super confident the whole game. I guess when we were down one nothing, maybe in the second or two one, 
people would think like, oh, you know, let's get it going. Otherwise he's over, but I never thought about, even in overtime, like they had some great chances and a couple of them, I was really nervous because there were some, there were some close calls. But then again, I was like, we've played so well this particular game and pretty much for the whole series and all year, like we do not deserve to lose this game. We do not deserve. But then again, when you're playing against a goalie that was playing out of his mind, like Ottinger was, I mean, we've seen before goalies steal a series. So I was like, I guess that went through my mind a little bit, but our goalie was playing, you know, just as good. So um, I'd say the most nerve wracking I was, is was uh, Pavelski had a great chance in overtime where he came down and shot it and just missed wide. And I was like, Oh boy. Like it was just perfect. Like right in my sight line. But, um, and then one of my best buddies, Hannafin had a great chance um, right before Johnny ended up scoring where the goalie had no stick and like, it, it was just like mayhem in front of the net. And he made some unbelievable saves. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 I was <clears throat> never, I never, my the thought never occurred to me like our season will be over after this. Like, it just never did. So um, I think most of the guys felt like that. And I remember Luch saying after the game, he's like, we deserve to win that game. But like, gosh, I've, you know, we've seen stories where goalies have won a series. So that goalie played out, Andre played out of his mind and, you know, was was definitely the MVP of that run. Yeah, he made a name for himself, and also for sure. And 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 also just like I'm sure in the in the handshake line when you're going through, you, you like just you know giving him a tap and being like, buddy, you just absolutely, you know, you almost stole this thing. Like you just, yeah, you're gonna be a hell of yeah, a player. And, and, and holy fuck, yeah, <laughs> you almost did it for no, your I, old boys, you know. And I and I didn't really I realized that at the time like what a hard series that was, but like talking to you know Luch and Louie and off and all these guys they said it was the hardest series that they've played yeah. you know in their careers the well, hardest the, playoff series there so. was not much there yeah. was not much room out there at all in that series and you know you got to give credit to the la kings to the way they played against the oilers they they shut them down a little bit but yeah. no your series against dallas i'm like fuck what year is this is this 2012 or what because it was like <laughs> we, it was tight yeah. actually yeah we actually went over i forget what game it was before it might have been before game six or seven it was later in the series you know, but you know, guys are you know getting banged up. It's been a tough series so far. There's, like you said, not much room. And we're going over video in the morning. I think it was before Game Seven. And um, one of our coaches is going over, it and he's just showing you know just just the, just no normal clips. You know, they're checking hard. They're four checking here, 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 pinching here. And I remember one clip. He's like, guys, there's not much ice there. Like you have to, you got to work for everything. I mean, look at here. Puck gets chipped in, or D gets hit. D to D, that D gets hit, puts it up to the four, he gets hit, bumps it to like the middle of that. He got he showed a clip. He's like, guys, you gotta take five hits before you can even get the red line to dump it in. I'm like, holy shit. Like this is a <laughs> I don't know if I'm if I'm made for this five hit, hit five times before the red line. But it was just it was just the perfect way to describe the series. Like there were five big hits and like big bumps before you could even dump it in, yeah. let alone like get a scoring chance. So yeah. it was uh, just the way that series was. No, it's funny. And a lot of people said it was the worst series in the first round. I It was my favorite series because it was low scoring. I would have liked to see a few more goals, obviously, especially for, you know, the top line guys. But I liked how it was, you know, earn your ice and, and try to get to the net and see what you can do. That's, that's, yeah, that's the old it. school in you too. It, yeah. yeah, rather than these fucking football I games. I mean, the game last night, yeah. Um, Maddie, while we're on this first round, uh, you just mentioned Johnny Goudreau. Everything he's been through in Calgary, like some of the ups and downs, you know, he's wearing an A on his jersey in that first round. He scores the biggest goal of his life. What was that like to see him in, in that moment? Like that's that's something pretty special for a guy like that. Yeah, very special. And as his teammate, we couldn't have been happier for him and for us that he was able to do that. But that was probably, you know, in hockey, that was my favorite moment of my career, seeing him score that and um, how happy I was, how happy he was. Everybody in the city was so loud. It was standing. Everybody was on their feet for the whole overtime. It was it was just such a cool atmosphere. And um, I don't know, how, you know, if it gets much better than Game Seven overtime. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, um, I, I got that to was, watch. That was special. So I got it to watch sick. one of my best buddies score one. You know, while uh, basically while on the ice too. Loop scored against uh, Washington when we we're in Philly in Game Seven in overtime. So I, I I totally understand what you're saying. Like seeing it live in those moments where it can go either way, seasons either ending or we're moving on, and your buddy scoring a big goal. It's it's all time. Yeah. You'll always remember that stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and I would no. Obviously, our line was was the one out there. Yeah, and so you know we were first in the hug them, and I was just getting mobbed by the teammates. And you don't really think during that. You're just yeah. kind of in like a little bit of like a like a blackout mode, 
And uh, yeah, super cool. I can't believe Cowboys didn't open up after that. I can't believe Cowboys is still yeah, not fucking yeah. open. Who's the owner there? <laughs> Get the owner on the line. Here. Open the fucking oh, no, thing, please. They've got, uh, I think they're making up for a stampede this year. That's the rumor. So that'll be, uh, that Cowboys tent is going to be um, nothing short of electric this summer. Maddie, take me into all right. From what I've heard, rumor has it. Yeah, rumor uh, has it. Rumor has it. (laughs) So you you guys win your game seven, you take the day, and and here comes the Battle of Alberta. Now, are you guys fired up? Or is a part of you wish that you were playing the Kings? Or you're like, fuck it, this hasn't been since 91, boys. Here we go. What's your thoughts when you first found out about the Battle of Alberta? No, like, honestly, I mean, we, I think pretty, the the Kings um, obviously put together, we were playing on different nights. We got to watch that series and they did a great job kind of playing similar to Dallas and giving the Oilers a, giving the Oilers a, a great series. But, um, you know, I think there's something special about that battle of Alberta rivalry. And, um, you know, there hasn't been a playoff series in years against them. So we were really excited for the challenge and um, just seeing how um, the whole province kind of shut down for that week and a half or two weeks or whatever it was. And, um everybody was so jacked up for it that's all people were talking about and you know unfortunately we came out on the wrong side but just to see the province kind of shut down was was really cool both in calgary and in edmonton so um both great atmospheres for the uh for all those games and um we were excited going into it and yet we know it was an exciting series but like i said came out on the wrong side yeah, no, I think you understand just how much that means to to Alberta people, right, and to Canadians. Like, I think they all deserve, you know, to see their teams go far in the playoffs, to see them battle against each other, to have these memories, younger kids, like, you know, with Kachuk fans and yeah. McDavid fans, getting to see getting to see a war. I, when you guys, <clears throat> the Fella Tour, so the Fella Tour makes our way yeah, up to Alberta. Yeah, got me to Alberta, Matty. I, because fuck, we were I going, never thought I'd go back to Alberta. Yeah, we were going to Tampa, and when you guys, <laughs> fuck, when you won game seven and the Oilers did, I'm like, Obi, I think we got to, like, take this thing north. Man. I wanted like, to go I'm, to Florida, Matty. I'm not going to lie. I love you, buddy, but I wanted to go to Florida. That's uh, that's. that's uh, <laughs> I do not take that personally. I mean, that's nothing better than Florida. So talk to me a little bit about the fans. Separate Edmonton and Calgary for for our listeners for a second. Like, you know, you got Edmonton fans. They're a little north. They're a little blue collar. They're a little fucking crazy. Oh, oh yeah. Right? They're, I'm, oh, from yeah. The, I'm from the north, so I can, I can jump in on that bandwagon. But, yeah. you know, and then Calgary. Like, you know, your fans are super loyal. You're... You know, you're in the Saddle Dome. Saddle Dome's been there for fucking 80 years. Um, talk about the difference in, like, the fans, the the rinks, the atmosphere, and just what that was like. Because, you know, experiencing the Saddle Dome, we sat right behind your bench. Awesome, yeah. right? But then you yeah. go up to Edmonton, and it's fucking nuts, too. And, like, so the, the separate the two and the fans, if you can, for a sec. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's my opinion about but it's harder because of, you know, one, I'm the home team and the other on the road team, but very ruthless in Edmonton. And I think uh, <laughs> they're, they're very ruthless off the ice too, not just during the game. Like you could run into somebody anywhere in that city and, and it's, and it's ruthless. Whereas I think if those guys were in Calgary, it's not as bad. Um, I just think that's just the way they are in Edmonton, we'll be honest with you. So um, especially with our team, but, what I thought was really cool and I wish more teams did it is I know in Calgary and Edmonton, they had the watch parties outside of the rink. And to me, that's like, that's so cool to see like, you know, video of a video of us scoring and they pan out to 10, 15,000 people in the parking lot party or whatever they called it in Calgary, the red lot party. I, I just thought that was so cool to see both, both cities do. Um, and there's so many Edmonton people that live in Calgary and there's so many Calgary people that live in Edmonton. So you see all those watch parties and in Edmonton, you can see you know, a third of the crowd being red jerseys and, you know, a couple when we were in Calgary, I'm at that red lot party. So I don't, I don't know what the main difference would have been. Um, obviously they had, you know, more success at home than, than we did, but uh, there's nothing like when, when the saddle dome gets rocking. I mean, game seven, uh, it was so loud. It was so loud. I couldn't even, you couldn't even hear yourself think. So, um, I don't know, both, both great buildings. One's 
lot different building. I guess that's one <laughs> big difference. The, the dome is vintage. <laughs> more, uh, yeah, vintage. More, more bath, more washrooms and bathrooms in the Edmonton barn, which I didn't mind. The, the pisser line in game three, Matty, was about 150 people deep. I had to go down Minimum. to some, somebody's suite and sneak in there to take a piss or I was going <laughs> to piss my pants. You almost dome. ended up in your yeah. dressing room trying to take <laughs> a piss. I was going to text you be like, Matty, open the door. I got to take a leak, fella. <laughs> well, I, I mean, opening the door in Edmonton, when we got there for game three, our door wasn't even open. We had uh, – I had to walk to the back and I see on ESPN app. Oh, that, that's when I knew new shit was going to go kind of sideways where they're blaming the loss on, on our locker room door, not being open before game three. I'm just like, Oh my God, here we go. So, um, <laughs> oh, God. yeah, some of that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it was, I mean, Edmonton security or whatever did their part. They walked us out and got us rattled a little bit before game three, but, um, <laughs> No, I I, uh, I really enjoy playing in Edmonton for their, um, you know, for their hostility and and their their crowd is 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 loud and um, I feel like you know it was like you know up when you played against Chicago or in Chicago when you're in St. Louis it's just yeah. there's something yeah. about those I mean those rivalry games are are awesome there's nothing like it yeah that's a great comparison Chicago yeah. St. Louis and back in my day Vancouver Chicago. Like, yeah, Van Chicago yeah. when you're in all those playoff series is uh, especially when you get into just like like playoff overtimes. I mean, we were when the one game we were in Edmonton when we were tied when Razzie scored that like 300 foot goal, and then we were tied with like a few minutes left. I mean, just the energy is so fun. Yeah, Maddie, I want to ask you one question that it's just something that I noticed throughout the series, and I know it's still fresh to you, so I, I hope I don't step on any toes here or whatever. But like after Game Three and. It was kind of the McDavid show after game three. And I thought you guys played with more structure in game four, but was there a sense after game three of maybe like, hey, fellas, let's slow this fucking pace right down here. Let's, like, I know we're a run and gun team all year, but let's slow it down. Let's hold the middle. Let's not chase this motherfucker because every time we do, it's exactly what he wants. Or like what was being said, not with the coaches, but between you boys at the team dinner or in the morning skate or stuff like that. Yeah, I think it was it was a, a calm approach and like let's get back to defending like we have all year. I mean, we were one of if not you know top five best of, you know top five defensive team in the NHL during the regular season and in the first round. Same thing, um, but yeah, just opened it up a little bit too much in those first few games. And I think what we had to get back to was you know, we were doing everything right where we were, you know, being above and, you know, not giving them everything. I know that game three, we gave them way too many odd man rushes, but we limited that the next few games. But I think what we weren't doing enough of is we weren't, you got, you got to be careful because when you're defending him, he's by far the best player in the world. And normally I'm not on him because, you know, I'm a winger, I'm with my D, but you see him, you can't go, you cannot go right at him. Yeah. That's what he wants. He wants you to jump right at him or lunge at him or, you know, go for the, out of your play or leave your guy to come hit him, you know, whatever that is. You just have to play calm on him. You have to be above him. But I think that our two centermen that played against him most of, you know, have played against him most of the year in my career has been Lindy and Bax. And they were very smart the way they play against him where they're always above him. And I saw in that LA series, you know, Dano and Kopitar, and you just got to give him like little bumps and just stop his speed before he can get going. You just always have to be above him. You kind of, I mean, you kind of have to give up, you know, your, I guess your structure, just, you know, whatever it's called. So you can just be above him because if not all their offense comes from him and all their rush games. So um, you just got to limit him on the rush. That, that's the main thing. Yeah, I couldn't agree it's more. Hard. It's it's it's, yeah. it's no, way it's, easier said than done. Dog, dude, oh, hey, don't get me wrong, Matty. Listen, I'm you know fucking sitting on my on my couch with a glass of wine watching you boys, but just watching that talking the up dog on our podcast, that's what I kind of you know talked to Uppy about, and you know even last night I watched the game and, and Eric Johnson on the power play, McDavid's in the corner. And EJ thinks this is a time to attack him. And McDavid just baits him in, slides it to dry settle, backdoor tap, and like you really yeah, can't yeah. go at this guy at all. It's amazing how big he makes the ice look. Yeah. Because he, yeah. my last like five years, Maddie, when things started to get really fast and guys were on you and it was more stick checking first, the ice was so small. Like you can't yeah. fucking skate anywhere. Because everyone's yeah. like, and then they're big. You got like Gabranson and Zadaroff. Their sticks are fucking 12 feet long. But <laughs> but he like it's like he just he's waiting and he's already on the edges to make either a left or right turn before you get there and yeah. it's it's wild. We didn't have an answer for it, Maddie. So I guess we, what we were asking. My answer, another, yeah, five guys in the middle uh, just stand there. Don't I have all five yeah. guys go in the net and just let them skate around all game. I don't know. That maybe that's the answer. Yeah. yeah. 
they uh and i mean obviously and we're not even talking about him on the power play where he gets more room in that yeah. you know that's really where he thrives and another thing we talked about in our series um and you know the 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 refs were calling a lot of four and four at the beginning of the series and we were saying like boys like we cannot put ourselves in a four and four position Smart. against this guy and like that that that's where he really really hurts you um when he gets that open ice and another thing too he does is when he on the power of play one thing that he's unbelievable at is he'll do the like you know the the circles around the zone Cir- yeah. like and then he'll he won't even make you tired but he'll just like get your like brain and this is me watching the <laughs> you get dizzy, dizzy but like the guy the guy's just like you know the one the first time he goes around you're in a good position but the next time you're like okay what's going on here and then you just freeze for a second and he normally hits a back door guy for either a one time or the net yeah. front guy so yeah. he, he, he's he's the best and you, you just gotta you know he's gonna get his looks you just gotta limit him yeah. it's it's way easier said than done though it's like i don't want to blow smoke up his ass any more than than most people are but he always makes the right fucking play it's crazy i'm like yeah, yeah. he's, he he's smart the, he's he's yeah. very smart well, well, yeah. and uh it's wild. He's, uh, one thing, one thing too, is he's, you know, he's gotten bigger too. He's, yeah. he's, he's really strong in the puck and it's hard, it's hard to knock off. Yeah. Well, Matty, listen, fella, you had an unbelievable year. We loved watching you play You're over a hundred points. You, you took the next step, fella. Um, how much time are you going to take off before you get in the gym? Cause I, you probably don't take as much time as I used to. I used to take about a month and a half, two months almost. I'm sure you're not going to take quite that yeah. much time, but how much time until you get back in the gym and get going? Well, I, I've thought about that. I'll, I'll definitely go in the gym first without, you know, I don't want to go back on the ice anytime in the next few weeks. Um, I, I will say like, you know, watching this go on and, and really believing that our team should be still playing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm way more motivated to get back in there and to get back sooner rather than later. If I'm being honest, like I, I feel like it's, we kind of screwed up a bit and we should still be playing. So um, and another thing, you know, you don't really realize this is obviously the furthest I've gone and our team's gone in a while. So you don't realize how big of a grind, you know, four rounds of playoffs would be and, you know, two rounds of playoffs were a grind. So, yeah. um, just training my body this summer to, to make sure that I'm ready for that and preparing myself for next year and years after for that four round grind. And, um, I don't know, probably take off. I know I was t- talking with my trainer already, you know, planning it out and he doesn't he was actually the one who i wanted to start up next week take like a week and a half off and he he said that he'd he'd rather not see me next week so um take take more time off after this grind of the year so i don't know probably probably take another 10 days off or whatever go two two and a half weeks and be fresh and luckily for for me this you know all the hopefully all the bumps and bruises from playoffs will be be gone by then and can hit the ground running. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, Matty, I only made it to the second round three times in my career. And even watching the, the conference finals last night, I'm like, I see them battling. I'm like, if these guys get by these guys, they got one more round of this and they've already played. Like, it's just, yeah. and I remember I used to be watching the conference finals after I got bounced out, you know, having a good time with this beauty. And I'm like, fuck, these guys are still going at it and they got one more round. Yeah. Like, if you really think about yeah. how hard it is to win that fucking thing. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's, it's hard. And when you're in it, you don't really, you're not really realizing it, but I think when you're done, I just think it's natural when you're done just to like, be like, like, like really think about it, like catch your air back and realize how big of a grind that was. But when you're going through it, you're just like, you're just grinding. You're playing every other night and you're game day off, game day off. You're feeling as good as possible. But I think once the season ends, you realize how, you know, how hard it was. Maddie, um, you just on the grind. Did you, did you bang up your elbow in the first round? Did, you, uh, did I um, see you do an interview with – and you, you kind of were hiding your elbow a little bit. I'm like, I think he's fucking – I did up. a uh, – I just uh, – in the in the two fights I did, the first one, yeah. I, you know, I fell on top of – or fell like right. kind of on uh, on that raffle. Um, and just, the elbow, you know, when your elbow pad moves, you hit the ice, you get a little bit of those bumps, the, the bleeding bumps or whatever. And then um, had a little bit of a, a little bit of a hand thing going. Yeah. Um, after the or you know through the second half of the year and kind of dinged it up and in, in the other fight i had but nothing that was yeah. nothing that was that uh that bad at all nothing I, that actually actually kind of you know, a weird a very weird way i put it in my glove and it felt actually better because of it so um yeah but you know how it is you don't go through there is not one person that goes through playoffs without doing something without dinging something up or 
you know, even Johnny's throwing the body around. He's like, yeah, yeah, I haven't really hit this much. You know, the shoulders are feeling a little sore. So, uh, yeah, I usually only take one timers yeah. and pass. This is crazy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I think I got more hits you know, in this first round than I did all season or more blocked shots. He's like, ah. Might have to put the shot blocker. <laughs> it was, it was funny. Yeah, I think you guys just on that injury front. I think you really missed Tanev too. Like he's he's been such a big part to your blue line, um, and and mm-hmm. what a good blue line it is. Um, maybe talk about just some of these guys maybe coming back. You know, there's a lot of free agents, a lot of moves Mr. Tree Living's got to make. But you, you, your back end was was big and strong, and and when healthy, I mean, a tough team to play against. Yeah, I loved our defense this year. I could only imagine playing against them. All big guys, all could skate well. Like, like I don't think people realize playing against those twin towers back there and Good Branson and Zadorov, how well they both can skate. And like, like we were talking about earlier, with the, how long the sticks are. Like, you can't. You can't there's no room against them. Um, but I think when uh, I think when you know Tanny got hurt, he's played very well against McDavid. Um, you know, every game we played against him, and you know. He's done a great job at frustrating him. Um, you know, obviously having him would have, you know, would have been great for us. But um, I even thought when he went down, you know, when guys came in, I know Michael Stone came in, um, you know, halfway through the Dallas series or towards the end and was scored a bunch of goals, produced a lot of offense, like really kind of changed that series for us when you think about it. Um, played really well. Was one of the few guys that was was producing out of our whole team. So, um, hopefully we can get most of them, if not all of them back. Um, I really like what they provided for us this year and, um, it just sucks. You know, that after each season, that's the hardest part for me is, you know, you're not going to have the same team come back and just that's, that's probably the most frustrating part because what a group we had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. And listen, Maddie, um, a hell of a season. Like I said, buddy, keep your head up. I love watching you play. You play old school, uh, over a hundred points. You're a great friend of the show, fella. We're always pulling for here for you here and your brother. Uh, let's try to tee up this summer. We'll be in touch with you. But thank you for everything you've done for Mr. Curfew. Keep your head up, fella. Yeah, would love it. We'll have to get uh, – what you guys will have to do next is I think you've got Brady and I both on here recently. Or, I mean, Brady's, Brady's been yeah, on. Brady's, he was yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah he was on a couple, Calgary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'll have to – You'll have to get uh, Big Walt on here. We'll have to do something us three together yeah, yeah. one time. So, but yeah, absolutely. I gotta ask Big Walt why he wouldn't throw his Obi Clark hat on when he had the hat trick in Game One. He loves that fucking hat, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, not that he probably has paid for a drink there in his life, but he's definitely not paying for a drink ever again there. That was the best publicity Obi's could have ever had. So, yeah. Um, he actually he actually joked around about that when um, we were talking to Jimmy and and um, and and. Um, Tuppy, you know Jimmy obviously from yeah. OBs, and he was saying that the <laughs> amount of people that are trying to buy, you know, whatever, whether it was buy or just are talking about OBs right now is is crazy. So hopefully a uh, a lifetime supply of apparel. And honestly, that's all Brady and I wear. We wear Budweiser, or Bud Light, or <laughs> Michelob Ultra shirts, and OBs hats. So we've got uh, a very limited closet just of all that stuff. Awesome, Maddie. Appreciate yeah, it. Go buddy, have a good you, golf Maddie, game go today. Up, enjoy your summer, buddy, and, and hell of a season, my man. Awesome. I'm going to go play with, I think Brady and I are taking on uh, Robbie and my dad. Oh. Said, so hopefully Brady takes off the boxing gloves around the, yeah. around the green, but I doubt it. Low and slow, buddy. Low and slow. Keep the head down. All right. See you guys. See you, see you brother. Lip boomers. Oh, lippies. Up dog. I know the promo code for this one, baby, because I am on the website. I just put in a massive lip boomer order. The candidates from Humboldt County, California with their new collection, the their, Humboldt collection. The new collection. I don't want to beat down the old collection because I love the old collection too. But this new collection, the double G4, the Skittles, the clean peach. The double G4. Is this why I feel a little uh, tingly? Oh, yeah. Tingly, fella. Right I, down I don't, to the nuts. I just made a nice little nice little order. But you know what? I pump in Curfew Cali. Booyah. Discount. Shipped right to my house. Didn't take a while. The new Lip tins, over. the new, the new tins, tins are amazing. You put that little chew thing when it gets a little too sticky. Icky, icky. You fire it right in the top. I'm going to sauce this right over to my partner here, Shane O'Brien. Look at that on the tape. Look at that. Do I have it in here? Let me see. Oh. Lip Boomers, baby. Our friends at CanadipsCBD.com. Log in now. Curfew code is Curfew Cali, baby. Curfew Cali. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. 
Up dog. We got it's Vegas Flowers. Weekly. Who the fuck is Larry Flowers? Or where the fuck is Larry Flowers? Where were you this weekend, Flowers? Anywhere an NHL player is. That's where he is. That's where you can find him. Hey, eh, Flowers? Fuck. You guys have already been giving it to me. The <laughs> truth of the matter is that I have. I was already planning to go to Las Vegas. My my vacation, my trip was already booked. Uh, Bob and I are chatting up after the series. He was a little down, obviously, and. I said, yeah, man, you know, things are going to be all right. It's just sad, <laughs> sad, sad way to, to go out. Um, but I'm going to go to Vegas. And, uh, and he goes, well, we just all booked our flight. We'll be there tomorrow. I go, no shit. I'm going to be there tomorrow, too. So, uh, hey, you talk about the Blues like they've never won a fucking Stanley Cup. Like, let, let's not feel too bad for them. They won a Stanley Cup in 2019. Like, yeah, but I think we've never won a fucking Stanley Cup. I get it, but I think when you're a team like that and you're that close and you're that and you're built for a long run, do you think they're the only close team that's ever been like close? No, but I th- a lot of teams in the NHL are super close. Their standard was cup or nothing. Um, they felt they had the team this year to get it done, um, and I think they're truly, truly not satisfied with the way the season ended. I mean, they had a great year. Um, I would have liked to see, if you watch the Blues in Colorado, to me, that's the Western Conference Finals. That's the way it should have been. I think the NHL needs to reseed, go back to the old school way, let the top, number one seed play the number eight seed, then reseed. That's why you play the regular season. You play the regular season to play the lowest seed. You play to seed. win the game. You do, but you play to so play the worst you're, team. You're thinking what? That it should have been a Colorado St. Louis Blues Western Conference final. Damn right. Like if you take the two best teams in the West, is probably what he's saying. Which are and you, you think they would have beat Colorado in the final, West Finals instead of? I, I don't know. I, I think they're. I think they're both really, really built well. I think they're both built to make a deep run, which they both did. Um, they both have different styles, and and that's what made that series. That was a great series, guys. That was yeah. a tremendous series. The Blues are built more. They didn't you know, have get everybody. Get deep, cycle a puck deep. Where you know Colorado's a little bit more of a running gun style, and it was a. Gr- I loved watching that series. I, I did. They I didn't enjoy that hockey. They didn't have everybody show up. Well, they didn't. They had there was three. There, let's just say they played what six games. Three games. Some of their top guys did. They were. They weren't. There. I. I don't disagree. I mean, listen. No one would have. No one would have predicted that their starting goalie would have been knocked out either. I'm not saying. I think Huse did a pretty nice job. I think he. You know I. They, I th- I, it was a tough bounce, the way things worked out a little bit. Um, they found a way to come back and to make it, like, fucking close. But in order to beat, the ch- like, the fucking, you know, let's just say, the, the regular season champs, Thanks, Colorado, you need your whole squad, squad every game. Yeah, you know, you just can't take games off. You got to find a way to pick up for your injured guys. Scandella coming back in the lineup was big for them. Yeah. Bobo blocking that shot in overtime. The series was over. Um, Losing Kruger was huge for them. Yeah, massive, massive. That was a big, big pickup this year for them. He's a hell of a player. Um, But you know what? Uh, Looking back, I really, truly enjoyed it. That series to me was good old-fashioned playoff hockey, back and forth, tough hockey. Um, I enjoyed it. You owe me a ball of Camus. I do? I thought you forgot about that. Oh, fuck. It's right here in my notes. It's It's right here in my notes. (laughs) You'll get your bottle. And uh, John Hamm was me and the Updog dinner in Hollywood. He does. You can come too. Oh, we bet well, we do. The yes. hammer. No, no, I bet him, not you. No, it's okay. I said, I said, John, I'll bet you game six. I'll split the check with him. I'll I said, him. game six. I go, me and Up, you're big on team dinners. Up, you got John Ham to come on Friday morning. Yeah, I know. You Blues fans were all fired up after game five, including John Ham. He was fired up too. So it was great talking to him, but I bet him. I said, listen, I'll bet you. I didn't want to bet him a series. I just wanted to bet him on that game because he's such a legend, right? I'll bet you game six. He said, I'll bet you a team dinner. And that was the right nice. bet. I don't know if he'll do They're it. They're at home. You got to hold had, to it. They had the game. I mean, I watched it. It was, it was very, very heartbreaking. Loud, five, like, seconds. To, five seconds. Darren Hell, like, make it McKinnon or someone to score. To like, go. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry, that's how you got to win series. Games. I know. Like, I get it. Home. But, Darren like, Hull. who the fuck is out there, too, on the on the blue? Like, to go from that's that. That's a miss. That's a fucking fuck up again. To go from that high to that low only happens, I mean, that's almost like a one in a million, right? Fuck, that hurt. I mean, it was... It was and you can't go higher, and you can't go lower in a series, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, well, yeah, that's, that's hockey, basically. That's, I mean, know. the best game of the series they played was game two. Yeah. If they would have played the way they played in game two for the whole series, they would have won the series. Yeah. They didn't. They played not very good in game three. Yeah, but they... They uh, didn't play very good in game four. Tip your cap to They Colorado. got outplayed in game five. Now, give St. Louis pre- credit. Resilient group. What they did in Game 5, I sat with this beauty sitting right where you are there before the hammer came on, and I went, I'm concerned. I am concerned with Kemper. I'm concerned with the character in the St. Louis Blues dressing room, Ryan O'Reilly, Perron, 
all the list goes on and on. I was really, yeah, really yeah, worried. Yeah. But if you want my God honest truth, and it has to do with Krug being out, the Bennington injury, whatever, it should have been over in five. It should have been done. Yeah. Like what team comes back from three nothing in the third period? Yeah. Only the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or maybe Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Like they'll come back from nine nothing. Yeah. But that's like that, there's that, no way they should have came back and got that game five and one. But and that, they did. That, that's I was a, like, oh my God, here we go. That's what lose. makes that team special. They've got the they've got the experience. They've been there. They're like, hey, let's just keep rolling. Let's see if we can get some pucks in and let's see what happens. And they did. Thanks, Biggie. Hell of a series. Hell of a um, series. Hell of a series. How'd the boys get to Vegas? They PJ in it? I think they took a PJ, yeah. The whole team? Uh, most of the team, yeah. How many guys? That's a good I squad. Don't. Yeah, I think it was... Who didn't go? I want to rip him on the pod. Uh, I don't know if I could say that. Who didn't go? Yeah. You can't say that. Is that did you, did you no, to, I just... Did I you know. have to sign an NDA? Did I didn't go? have to sign an NDA, but I think it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put that laundry out there, but... Um, they had to the sign... Let's see if I can guess who didn't go. I'm going to try to guess. Uh, Tarasenko, no. Buchnevich, no. None of the Russian connection went. You can wink if I'm right. <laughs> oh, I'm wrong. Shit. No, I think Pusnevich would have went. I would say one thing. Okay, hold on. Let me keep guessing. <laughs> Bozzi, of course, went. He's the best. <laughs> he was <laughs> ripping me the whole weekend. It was great. We told him to throw I'm you gonna in the pool. Say, oh, I'm going to was... say Paranko didn't go. Paranko goes. He goes. Yeah, he, he goes. goes. He goes. Uh, fuck, I'm over. <laughs> Who didn't go then? <laughs> Fucking Kale Rosen. Did Kale Rosen go? No idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just signed him to a two year deal. You know what he got in the minors? Four hundred and four fifty. That's what guys are making in the minors now. Inflation. I would have still played in the minors for four fifty. I would have rode the bus all over God North America. I'll just say this: that Butchnevich, is an Brent, awesome, hey. awesome guy. Brandon, I would hang with him any day of the week. What Brandon, a beauty! Brandon Saw didn't go. I don't know. Hundred percent. Brandon Saw didn't go. I'd say he went. No, no. Part of the group. Shenner, of course. Fact Daddy, of course. Thomas, yeah. Cairo, yeah. The Aussie, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they got a team. Nick Letty didn't go. No, he goes. He's a, he's a beer drinker. Wow, he like, he he's a good guy. I had beers with him in here. Wow, what a he's squad. A guy. He's so you're right. What a squad. They got a good squad. I, went, I, just, I just went through the whole team. I know. They got a good squad. I can just, I, I'll say this. Peron and I were chatting up a little bit. He just was looking around and he said, Flowers, look at this group. What a special, special group. Um, had some choice words about his about his teammates that were incredible. Um, and it, it was nice to hear something like that. You know, I could see I, I could see a prawn, I could see a prawn signing for less in ball in uh in St. Louis. I, I really can. We'll see what happens. He's so he's so good, man. Um I would love to see him re-sign with St. Louis Blues. I, I think um Obviously, I've got a special relationship with that group more than any other team. I don't, but I see what I, I what, from what I see, they have a really, really special group. Um, and I'd love to see Perron resign with them. The question is, do you have that special, if, if Rob Bertuzzo gets traded, do you still have that special bond with that group? That's a hell of a question. If they trade him and Shen, you don't know. People, they would forget about Larry Flowers. I think that. if they, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think they're trading Bertuzzo with that deal I'm he's got. Joking. I mean, he, he, paid, Bobo, he Bobo, signed for way too yeah, much. Like, I told him. I told him. He did. Uh, I told and him he knows it. Season. I said, buddy, you, you, the guy, the way he plays, the way he plays, he had an opportunity. He's making 950 for the next two years. It's, it's fine money. I think he could have got like one five, one six on the open market. I think I'm, I really think that. I think I'm safe to say this. He said something to me that was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. He said, "You know, Flowers, I think I signed for less. I know I did, but my theory is, you sign for less, you outplay your deal, you get resigned." No, no, there's there, and that's there's that's a good way. What of a genius! Like as soon as, I mean, it happened to me. I got to the point where I was overpaid and I, I was out of the league. It didn't help me stay in the league. I, when he like, said that to me, yeah. I was I kind of looked at him like, yeah, "Wow, like the that, year, what a mentality!" Yeah, like the year I got put on waivers, I think I was making like two four. Like if I would have made nine fifty, somebody would have picked me up. But at two five or two four, no one was picking me up. Yeah. But if Bobo, if Robert Tuzo went on waivers next week at nine fifty, someone's scooping him. So there's a method to his to that. Being like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to be out of the league, and I can continue to play and be a good guy. And man, Armstrong's no dummy. Either. No, yeah. totally. He knows. Like, yeah. I mean, he knows. Bob was a great team guy. Is could he get one three for a couple of years somewhere? He should. Yes. Does he risk getting fucking you know fucking his knee up in the last ten games of the season, and all of a sudden he's going into free agency at thirty three years old with a bad knee? 
then does he that's, get a one year deal? So I mean, that's the thing with Bobo is like the way he plays. Like he's yeah. one block shot away from like, like I hope it never happens to him because he's such a great guy. But he's like a one block shot away from who knows. Like he got hit the fucking head this year with a block. Like <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's it's. It's I, a tough debate. I can't imagine uh, even at one three. I can't imagine there's a team in the NHL. No, that I think won him. I think he would have got. I think he would have got one five, one six, one seven, something like that. Yeah. I truly believe That's that a as, a, as a right-handed D-man that kills penalties, that can fight. I mean, the Toronto Maple Leafs would love Robert Tuzo. Now, I don't know if they could afford him at what the numbers I just said. Probably one five is what he would have got, maybe a little less. Um, so whatever, that's an extra six hundred grand that, a year. Again, that speaks that speaks volumes about the St. Louis Blues, and he wanted to be there, and he kind of. He he gave a cap friendly type number to the to and agreed to it. That's how you win. If you, if your guys are that happy, you gotta have cap friendly deals. You should have seen Bobo. I, I will say this: he he knows how to dance. He's a good dancer. He had, <laughs> the one night he's doing, he's beating the drum in the club. He's playing the drum. He takes the sticks off the one guy. You know the guys, the pros that come in, they yeah, play yeah. the drums or everything. They're professionals. Bobo walks. So he give me those sticks. He starts playing the drums. It's hilarious. He had me dying. Vegas, baby, Vegas. Vegas. Um, I'll take that ball that came as, as soon as possible. Yeah, no, no, you, you got it. You can take your time. Oh. Yours, I, I would like, did you bring it with you? I didn't bring it with me, but O'Brien, I'm good for it. Okay, I'm going to ask you about the Flyers, although I don't think you're a Flyers fan anymore. Yeah. Um, are you a Flyers fan still? Or? You know, this is, how I, this is how I talk about the Philadelphia Flyers now to people. Um, the Philadelphia Flyers are like, they're like my brother, right? Someone you have to love. They're part of your family. They're part of my DNA. It's your wife. Um, you know, still I, I'm, I'm, it's your wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Blues, your girlfriend. They're the, fir they're the first. The Oilers Americans. are your your Mexican fucking hook dad. <laughs> I love that. I love that he used. The I love that he used the terminology of you have to love them, and you went with through, through your wife. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the Flyers. You're the Flyers are beautiful. the part of my DNA since I was a seven year old. No, we um, know you're a Philly mutant, but do you still cheer for them? Of course I cheer for them. I'm okay. a Philadelphia Flyers fan to the death. Okay, so I would like to see them I would like to see them make some serious core changes within um like I said before. Well, let pod. me ask you my question I wanted to ask you. They interviewed John Tortorella, one of my one of my favorite coaches and me and Uppy just talked about it before we had you on. We were both kind of I'm 100% in Uppy kind of liked the idea as well and we agree with you there needs to be some changes, but as a Philly guy, like Torts could come in there handle the media. You know, he's not going to be intimidated by the, the, the fan base and they're going to play a hard structured game. And I think John Tortorella would be a great fit for the Flyers. I could not agree more. O'Brien, you and I have talked a lot about John Tortorella um, because I didn't really. I, when you're a guy that played with him, you really understand the type of guy he is because there's a lot of people that look at him and look at his interviews and see the things he says. And they're like, oh, they have a lot of they have everything to say, not knowing shit. But you do. And, and I, I respect your opinion. And. You've spoke very highly of him, and he seems like a kind of guy that could come into Philly and maybe make some big uh, changes and differences in, uh, within that locker room. Fuck, we got the can of dips taped to tape down the studio. Yeah, tape to tape. Our first you couple guys were are perfect. Pros. You guys are pros. Um, all right, the offside. We got into it before we got on air. You, you, you think it was offside, right? And you're, you want them to change the rule book too, or what? We're talking game one of the Western Conference Finals. The offside play with... Um, who the fuck was it? Makar and uh, the big Russian. I don't the know. Russian train. I don't know. It What'd seems to me, it? it seems to me like the rules are being bent and changed on and the fly. They, no, no, no. They, I, but they were. Let's just get this straight. They were changed like two years ago when you could lift your skate off the ice because they there was a discrepancy. Is like now you're not only watching the puck, but is the guy's foot still down and is he straddling the line or what's the deal? Now they changed the rule. They changed it because of that. But the rule has always been that as long as the puck is over and you're not touching the puck, you can still have a guy in the zone. You just, as soon as you put your stick on the puck inside the zone with your other player that has two feet inside, if he comes out and he just puts his foot and it's up in the air and he gets it over the blue line, it's a fucking, it's, it's a no longer delayed offside. Yeah, but at, at what point do you? At what point is the puck not on your stick, or it is on your stick? At what point do you have full when control? It when it physically touches the fucking on puck. your fucking tape. But when, when, you're, that, when you're dangling, it's not. I know you didn't have the puck much when you played, but yeah. when it's on your stick, <laughs> fucking guy played with tennis balls. <laughs> well, I, listen, I, I'm of the belief that puck's on his stick. He's got full control. If he's pushing the puck three feet in past him to try to get the guy back and then catches up to it. If that's the rule, then fine. But he's and that you puck is on a stick as it possibly can. Touch the puck inside the fucking blue. Oh line. man, 
<laughs> now, listen, I spent a long time. I'm looking at the comments, and obviously the fans are fans, and they say whatever they want, and, and social media, like, trolls are going to say whatever they want to say. But, I mean, it is absolutely unanimous. People still understand the game. I mean, there's not a person online that I saw that agrees with that call. That call, that's off sides, guys. NHL, get it, figure out exactly what the rules should be, make it as clear as possible, and figure it out because there's a lot of fans in the NHL. The fans, I mean, that's, that, that, those are the people that are paying your bills. They're not happy. So there's something wrong with the rule, I think. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't it's just know, the but way it's I'm going to tell you one thing, that if the puck wasn't on his fucking stick, I'll tell you that right now. So I, I, the, all the rest, I don't really give a fuck about, but he didn't have full control of it. So you're saying when you go backhand the forehand for that split second when the stick's yes. over the puck, it's not yes. on the puck. It yes. isn't. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. No. Guys, come on. It's like in anything. Touch. The, it's like in a golfer. Is the golfer addressing the ball or did he fucking touch the ball? <laughs> fucking dummy. He's it's comparing like, it to golf. It's like, are you finger blaster or you're rubbing her leg? <laughs> That's what like Flowers. He's always hey? like, yeah, I hooked up with her. I finger, hooked up with yeah, her. Yeah, are you finger blaster you're rubbing the inside of her leg? <laughs> You rubbed her inside of her legs, but you told the boys you finger blasted. Yeah, exactly. You didn't, bud. No wonder you hook up with so many girls. <laughs> you're both fucked. Hey, it's not to, unless you're in, you're, you're not in. <laughs> unless you're in, you're in the fucking way, Flowers. <laughs> All right. Um, Tampa Rangers series. You're a Philly mute, and I love you, but you're mute. And you've been all over the Rangers, so do you want to stir the pot with our Rangers fans or what? Uh, just you know, I, you, you, you told me last night that they they're, they're shit. The Rangers are shit. I mean, like I was being, I was trying to get you going just a little bit. They're not shit. <laughs> uh, I would personally like to see Sidney Crosby in this position right now. I was hoping the Pittsburgh Penguins would have gotten would have moved forward so they could play. Carolina. You know how the playoffs work, right? You have yeah. to win to advance. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. just hope teams get in. Like oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, like there's things that happen through the course of the series flowers that change the series. So that's why the Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins aren't here. Yeah. I'll put it this way. Good luck. New York Rangers against the Tampa Bay lightning. Cause they are going <laughs> to roll them. You mark my words. That team is going to roll them. They're, they're, they're rested. They, they play. They're not only, they're not only high powered offense, but man, they play D they play composed. They know how to win. Patty Maroon. He's He's playing for a fourth, fourth fucking cop. Four in a row. For four game. in a row. Could you imagine? I, I, the I, big I, rig. Did you Boys, hate... I see Tampa Bay so close to like hoisting that thing again. Like, and they, you, you said something to me. They're the best that, team left. You said they're something. The they are. That you said something to me they're that that I left. I will never forget. You said now team now they can taste it, and when you can taste it, it can, in the beginning of the playoff they, they came out a little slow. You're like let's see what we're gonna do. What do we have left? But once you start to taste it, yeah. yeah. Man, Jesus. he's um, licking his fingers. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you? Uh, did you hate Rangers fans? I want Rangers fans to kind of. I want to get like a social clip to where like the Rangers fans can get on you. So, did you hate Rangers fans? Like growing up, or do you hate Rangers fans now? If, if we took you to MSG and you saw Rangers fans as a Philly guy, forget about you know where you are now in life. Back in the day, did you hate Rangers fans? I've always hated <laughs> Rangers fans. <laughs> I still hate Rangers fans, and I always will hate. Rangers fans. They're right. painful. Okay. They're so... They think they're... We're in New York. First of all, half the Rangers fans live in freaking Jersey, fuck's sake. Um, which pisses me off, just like the Giants. <laughs> Here um, we go. This is what we want. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it drives me crazy. You know, I it, Fuck all your girlfriends down in Margate. Yeah, right. It's the other way around, first of all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of the rich guys from Manhattan are fucking yeah, I know. girls, they come, eh? They come down their polo shirts. They come down to Margate for the weekend thinking they're cool. <laughs> talking to them like my South Philly girls. They go to like the Hamptons. Full they on inner they, city girls. Like, they don't go to Margate. They go to the Hamptons. No, they, 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 well, no, a lot of them do come to Margate, yeah. and they do try to, they try to, you know, they wear nice watches. Um, and they try to talk to our South Philly girls who don't play that game. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. Go back to Manhattan. Go fucking sell your stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, he used that as a social clip. All right, Flowers. Um, what about watches, buddy? Me and you talk. Some of our beauty listeners out there, what can they get? Can they hit you up? Or, you're, you know, how do they find out some ideas for some good prices if they don't, you know, can't want to roll but something that, you know, looks National League, stuff like that. Can they hit you up on stuff like that? Yeah, yo, that's, that's yo, a great... Flowers. <laughs> yo, this is the eye of the tiger. This is the eye of the tiger. <laughs> no, of the tiger. I, know, I know if I wasn't playing the show, I wouldn't be able to afford the shit that you're selling. So what, like, what... Yeah, so, I still don't can't afford the shit you're selling. So, you know, I, I like to keep my, my social media, like, obviously I want to do the show-off watches, the high-end stuff, um, the big diamonds and stuff, but a lot of people have the misconception, and I get DMs all the time, like, hey, Flowers, like, man, I, I, you're a beauty. I love what you do. I wish I could afford a watch from you and I'm like oh like 
I do sell okay. lower end, high end pieces, Brightlings, IWCs, um, Hublot, and stuff like that. Um, all someone has to do, honestly, is send me a link from a website from like IWC, for example. I get big discounts on those pieces. Um, I do sell them all the time. I just don't promote them as much. Maybe I should. Um, That's what Mr. Curfew's for, bud. Yeah, even 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 engagement rings. I, I can't tell you how many guys call me like, "Hey, I have a budget of five thousand or ten thousand. I'm sorry, I, I'm sure you don't you know work with a." Well, you know, with a pigeon like myself, they call it. I'm like, hold, hold on. Like, I'm a Northeast Philly guy. Like, I don't come from anything like that. Like, I'd love to help you. I prefer to help you. Um, just, you know, I, I like helping people. But I do sell pieces that are not as expensive. I, I absolutely. Okay, awesome. Flowers, break down for, for a second here. Obviously, the, the stock market's complete dog shit. Yeah. Um, you know, inflation, all this stuff. <laughs> Jewelry. <laughs> Dick's, Dick, foreshadow and, and uh, forecast you know, someone invests in jewelry right now. Is safe to put money there? Is it like buying gold, silver? Fucking, I ding my watches up all the time, so I got to take care of them. But what do you see like the jewelry? Like, because obviously the market, um, the last couple of years, the watch market has gone crazy. Um, you know, you wanted a Rolex two years ago. The same Rolex now is <laughs> double, maybe triple the price. What's what's the jewelry market going to do yeah, in the next little bit? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, I would have to say it depends on who you're buying from. It depends on the prices you're paying. Look, a lot of these big time jewelers and these really nice jewelry stores, they have massive overhead. And so they they, they have, you know, th there's numbers that they need to meet and there's there's prices that they're kind of, how do I say this? I, I just don't take advantage of clients like that. Um, I'm it's a hit- girls, eh? I, <laughs> Sorry, hey, buddy, hey. I'm a hit singles kind of guy in my business. If you buy your jewelry well and you're buying good quality pieces, you're putting your money into from one pocket into the other. I Again, I, I, I work off singles. So even with watches, uh, engagement rings, custom jewelry, if, if, you're, if you know who you're buying from and you can trust that person that you're getting the right prices, then you're doing fine. Um, there's, there's, I mean, if, if you're going to go out and create a big, your initials with diamonds and all this nonsense, yeah. custom funny stuff, so probably not, you're, you're probably gonna have a hard time selling it. It's probably just going to be like melt when you get a sell. Safe but. to say you buy, you buy the right watch, um, you invest in the right piece. It's pretty, pretty safe to keep your money there. I'm very, very big on advising my clients on smart purchasing. I have good conversations with those guys, with everyone that calls me about where they're at. Um, financially and where they're comfortable spending. And I try to help them make smart purchases. It's a very, very important and integral part of my business. And I take a lot of pride doing that. You've, you've heard it here first. He's wants people to make smart decisions because that's what he does all the time. Well, no, I'm just trying to make everyone make decisions. Unlike what I've made my whole <laughs> life. Right? Flowers. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio, my man. Um, I think you should go get an IV probably, right? I do. I didn't even faint last time we got the IV last yeah. time I was in here. Finally. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I had to do a whole breathing, like... How many nights were you in Vegas? Four? I was in Vegas. I got in Saturday morning. I left Tuesday... So Tuesday. three nights. Three nights. <sighs> three nights almost killed me over the fellow tour. So you're in better shape than I was. That, with the three nights over the All-Star break, I was so in one. I'm going know. to Top Gun tonight. Wow. Top Gun. Top Gun. Have you seen it yet? Uh, big of Edwards. course. I saw it opening night. Thursday you night. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to go again? I would go again. Who'd you go, who'd you go see with? Um, Are you sticking I, down I, here a couple for people, the game? A couple people. Um, I might. A couple people in my building. That oh, I, yeah, yeah. So, so, so Cody. I'm seeing it Thursday. This is great. This is great. Cody Libel, who's my movie partner for 15 years. I mean, we've seen more matinees. I mean, more matinees than probably anyone in the country um, over the span of 15 years. Uh, he literally flies home to Toronto to surprise yeah, yeah. his dad, Lorne, to watch Top Gun, which is absolutely legendary. Yeah. Um, but while he's in Toronto, he sends me a text. He goes, something's coming at you right now. Check your email. I go to my email. He goes, I just got you six tickets to Top Gun tonight just so, someone, just so no one's sitting near you. <laughs> <laughs> so I had six tickets. I brought three friends from, uh, from my building, went and saw it. I'm and fired the, up to see it. It is Boys, it is the real deal. Yeah. It's incredible. It's smashed box office numbers, um, and you're going to enjoy it. I, I'd love to watch it. With yeah, you guys. I'm going Thursday with my boy Cramper. We're going to go. Fucking right. Go it's care. incredible. All right, Flowers. We appreciate you stopping by, fella. Love you, boys. All right, brother. Yeah. Looking good. Up dog. The weather's, I mean, we're spoiled out here. The weather's always nice. But over in New York and the Midwest and up home. It's getting nice. It's getting nice. Time Get for the good fresh, life tees. Fresh tees. Break them out. How about some shorts? Love their shorts. I got like this uh, the new corduroy short they got. Ooh. Little, it's a little high. 
Show you off the quads. Mind. You don't mind a little high short. I, I wore that. them the other day you to Big Guy's. Uh, well, I had one on at Big Guy's uh, birthday party there. Got to say. Mother's Day party. Some mean. eyeballs mother's from the party. mothers there at the Mother's Day party because <laughs> the shorts were a little tight. I love the Henleys. I just put an order in for Henleys. Um, they got lots of great spring colors. Up dog. I felt like I was looking at your closet. There was pink and light How blue. How about this green. one I got on? Nah, this is like nice. the olive. So get the Henleys, the spring Henleys for people up in Canada. Playoffs are here. Starting to get nice. Got to get some new gear from Good Life Uppy. It's true, true, true. And opening and expanding their uh, brick and mortar business uh, with a store in Newport Beach. Love it. At Lido Marina. Can't wait to see this store in action. We'll go there, get our coffee. I was just going to say, walk that. coffee, around. get in there, have a hey, peek. Bring little Riley, my dog. Yeah, that'll be great. So, Good Life, check it out. What's that promo code up, dog? Curfew. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up dog, DraftKings, baby. They're everywhere. They are everywhere. Um, we're and loving it. we got the parlays humming. we got this and that going. So we wanted to bring in the, you know, the guy that's going to help us he's out He's going to fire us some nuggies. He's, he's going to fire us some nuggies. Hey, give us a nugget. Keith Cavanaugh, thanks for joining us, fella. How are we doing? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Really looking forward to it. Uh, still coming down from yesterday's game. Keith, for a second, just describe to our listeners what your role is at, at DraftKings because they're everywhere, yeah. baby. Yeah, so basically what I do is I, I talk to you guys, so any kind of partners we have, and I help help set them up to get their bets on site. So anytime the fellows want to run a parlay, they go through us, we put it on site, we brand it for them, uh, get out all their social stuff, and then they send it out to their following, and that's when you guys see it, and then you guys click the links and bet on it with the fellas yeah it's really changed to the name of our um you know of our betting game the fact that you know you can log into DraftKings sportsbook now and as soon as you click on hockey boom the fellas like we're part of you know it's been such a great partnership but now awesome. we make it easy for our, for our listeners when we you know when we want to pitch out our our parlays single games or been, series parlays we've been sniffing too Fuck, we've been sniffing we won the first round we did we got the first round parlay. yeah we won the, we hit that first how we how, yeah how we've been doing uh, the first round was a winner, and we got a thirty percent boost on that. So some good EV for the customers. Yeah. Round two, round two, a little cold. Uh, you got I know. I three. went one for three. Fuck, it was tough. Panthers, Hurricanes did not. And I then, uh, then this round, this round we got Lightning, Avs parlay. We put a twenty-five percent boost on it. So depending on when you got it, it was about plus one twenty-three, and we got it up to plus one fifty-four for the for the users. Wow. Hey, what's our max? What's That's the max great. bet someone can put on that? By the way. Hammer uh, that at plus, you, plus, what'd you say, plus 155? Did you yeah, say? Yeah, plus 155. Hammer that, listeners. Hammer that. <laughs> Fucking hammer it. Yeah, usually a $50 max bet for those. Bets. $50 oh, max okay, bet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can think you put five dimes about, on it. Right? I was logging in here, Keith, being like, what can I put in there, baby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we sell the farm here? We're going all in on the fellas. Yeah, we're going to put Mr. Cur our whole production on that at plus 155. <laughs> um, Keith, I asked you about the Rangers game tonight. You showed me the Brodeur jersey. Uh, obviously, grew up a Devils fan. Yep. Yeah, I had season tickets since I was three years old. Um, have some great stories for another day. If you guys have me on with uh, maybe Scott Gomez, Pat Burns, Doc Emmerich, all the boys. Uh, but yeah, I've been going to games forever. Went to game seven in 2003 when they won the cup. And uh, that's just where uh, probably where my fandom is. And basically, right now it's been a little tough, but I think I think we're on the rise. The young core is really good with Husey, um, both Hughes actually, and then we got Mercer, we got Brat, so Dougie in the back end. We just need to fix goaltending, maybe get a top six winger in free agency, and I think that's that's where our two main priorities are going to be to kind of get us over the hump. And you need and, and you need a little size, my man. You guys are a little small. You need a little size too. If there's although Miles Wood was hurt all year for you guys. Yeah. So when he comes back, that guy plays hard. But I, I'm with you on everything you said. They just need a little size to help out with the Hughes guys and everything you said. And they need a young Kenny Danico back there. Oh, that would be awesome. Just a There's no Kenny more Kenny. young Kenny Danicos out there. <laughs> but, yeah. Keith, but Keith, yeah. I wanted to tell you, my, my first playoff experience in the NHL was at the old Continental Airlines Arena. With I was playing with Tampa at the time, and... I had, like, I came out from game one warm-up. It was the first time I'd played there. I didn't play there in the regular season because I got traded from the Western Conference. And instantly I remembered all the good teams the Devils had and, the, you know, winning Stanley Cups there. And I was like, holy shit, I'm actually out here. This is kind of crazy. Because the Devils have that about them. Yeah, exactly. That winning pedigree. Was that a... 
that was like the series where I think Grant Marshall tucked one in like triple overtime to like was that was that against the Lightning? No, our our series they beat us in six, and then I think I don't know what year that what year was that? That was uh, the year the Ducks won, so oh six oh seven. Oh, okay, gotcha. We lost in six to them. They were they're a pretty good team. First yeah. round, yeah, first, first round. round we lost. Ah, in six. First round. But yeah, going back to the size comment, you look at what the Rangers did this offseason, right? They added some real size. They got Revo, they got Goudreau, and I think like solidifying that bottom six for them is kind of what's really helped them in the playoffs progress to where they are right now. Fucking, they, they were without Sammy Blay too. <laughs> the Rangers Man. had Sammy Blay. Yeah, if they really had Sammy Blay right now. I love playoffs. Sammy Blay. Yeah. I love Sammy Blay. Um, Keith, let's talk about, first of all, like Uppy said, we love our relationship with DraftKings. Missing curfew wouldn't be what it is without DraftKings. And we were really excited about the Ontario launch. Obviously, we got a lot of fans and listeners up there. Uh, we were hoping to go up there, but the Tampa Bay Lightning decided to beat the Leafs in seven. So what's going on? Uh, just explain it for us, please. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, we're officially launched in Ontario, full, full forces. Um, took a little while, but we got there, which is fantastic news. Um, like you mentioned, it would have been great if Toronto had won that second round because then we could have had a big launch party in Ontario. We could have possibly went to a game, done some uh, live streams at local bars there. Um, but basically, our, our big offer we have right now for new customers, uh, they must deposit at least $100, and they can get up to 2500 back in bonus bet if their first bet loses. Uh, terms and conditions do apply, but that's our big offer right now for Ontario. Wow. So you put in 100 bucks, and you just pick some phony team to lose, <laughs> and then you could win up to 2500 in your account? Depending on how much you wager on your first bet, if it loses, yeah. you receive that back in a bonus bet. So if you ah. were to wager two thousand dollars on your first bet and it loses, you get two thousand dollars back in bonus. So bet. it's go big or go home because it's a win-win. Exactly. Fucking rights. Yeah. That's why I love DraftKings. There you go, DraftKings, baby. You got me hooked. Um, you also were telling the boys it's a pretty cool thing now. Anytime overtime goals, Keith. Yeah. So that's our new market we have up for the next two rounds in the Stanley Cup Final. As soon as the game starts on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You go in, you select the player that you think might score the overtime uh, the overtime winner. Um, if overtime doesn't happen, you get your money back. Like It's, it's like it, the bet never took place at Voids. And uh, basically, it's live throughout the game. And in addition, uh, during the third intermission, going into overtime is live when most people will probably be getting on it. But yeah, the numbers are crazy because they're mostly like a first goal score uh, market. So for last night, for example, McKinnon, McDavid, and Dreisaitl were all around plus 1,000 to be the anytime overtime goal score. So if the Oilers had kind of tied it up late, that would have been interesting to see how that played out. Wow. Wow. I'd just like to know, like... You get McDavid at plus 1,000 for overtime goal? Yeah. That's free money. That, yeah, that <laughs> is free money. I would love to see... I'd love to get into the algorithms of you guys. As oh, boy. Fucking happy Here we God. go. And I'd oh, like okay. to see where all the cash... Look out. Where all the smart money goes. You know, we, we, we had a podcast here. We're a couple ex-players, and we, we feel like we know the game a little well. But when the guys sit back... And, you know, we've got to compete in the DraftKings Championship Series, right, where, you, you, fuck, you start with whatever it was in our account, and you got to just bet, 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 bet. There's some guys who just, long. They, they know how to do it. They know that you got to get the two-team parlay right off the stop, then you got to hammer it down again. I want to know, come down the stretch here, we got, you know, the Western Conference Final, the Eastern Conference Final. Where's all the smart money going? Where's like what's good question? Evaluate the next round here that we're we're gonna go into. We got Tampa and we got a great goalie and we got New York with a great goalie and good offense too. Where's the smart money going in this series tonight? Like with the Ranger game, Ranger Tampa. Like, yeah, that's a good question. So the current splits for the series, um, so this is who's gonna win the series. So on DraftKings Sportsbook, we have eighty six percent of the handle and eighty four percent of the bets are on the lightning. At minus 175, so a lot of a lot of people going heavy on the lightning. However, for game one tonight, we have 63% of the handle and 51% of the bets on the Rangers at plus 110 mm. to take care of business at home. In game one. They should be a little sharper, right? They didn't have the week off. You know, they're at home. They're in yeah. the fucking Madison Square Jungi. There's a lot of yeah. yeah. There's a lot of reasons why starting off tonight is Vasilevsky going to be in primetime form, or is he? You know, is he? putting a little aloe vera on the fucking back from, <laughs> from spending some time on the beach. Yeah. Who knows? When you look at it too, historically, most of these teams, when they're coming off a long layoff, they not only start slow, but they actually lose more series than they win as opposed to a team coming off between two to three day rest, which is what the Rangers are coming off of. So that's why there is probably some value on taking the Rangers. They're about plus plus one fifty on the DraftKings sports book. Um, you know, take it, take a stab at them, see what happens. Um, so I, I would love to know that stat, and sorry to cut you off there, Keith, but I would love to know that stat going 
further into the playoffs. Like I can understand in the first round you sweep, right? But fuck, as the guys get banged up and, you know, you go through and you play Carolina in a seven-game series, you play Pittsburgh in a seven-game series, at some point you're getting worn out. I don't care who, what anyone says. And at some point, like the Tampa Bay Lightning, they just trust the fact that they've been in this spot before, right? So this might be a case where I wouldn't put too much on, like, well, Tampa's had fucking five, you know, they've had, what is it now, eight days off? Yeah, something like that. I think it's eight or nine. Yeah. So I, I, I would just say typically, because I, I did play, I, I played in a sweep in St. Louis, uh, I got St. Louis and Vancouver my first year. We had eight or nine days off and we got pumped game one by Chicago. But yeah. I think this situation, you're right, because they played so much hockey and they've been back to back champs. I think the eight days for them was good. I think they've, this is like a start of a new playoff for them. And now yeah. they realize all they need is eight more wins and they get that cup for the third time. I took Tampa in the series and I took Tampa tonight, Keith. This is before oh. I talked to you, so I would have maybe changed my, my pick. <laughs> but um, I did see a big bet alert on DraftKings Day. Somebody put 175K on Tampa, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That, that just came through. Um, so, yeah, big bet on Tampa, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and I think, too, when you think about Tampa, they've played so much hockey in the last three years that, like, the eight days rest, like you mentioned, is fantastic for them because they've just had two long cup runs and they haven't had as much time in the offseason to rest. So I think that's definitely something that plays a factor into here. Yeah. Uh, one interesting bet on the sports book that I think the viewers might want to might wanna look into, um, we have a head-to-head -head goals market where you can pick a player. It's basically three, three different uh, players, uh, three different versions of the bet. So right now we have... Panarin versus Kalorn. And Panarin to have more goals than Kalorn in the series is minus 125. And if you go round by round this year, Panarin had three goals in round one, Kalorn had zero. Panarin had one goal in round two, Kalorn had zero. So I think there's some value on taking Panarin there. Kalorn doesn't have a goal yet? Come on, click killer. No, no, I got him on my playoff team. I don't think he's got a goal. Oh. Yeah, that's why I'm in last. He's still a good team guy. He's got a couple nice I apples. I take he's that bet. So yeah. he's going to be like plus 115 if Panarin's minus 125, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna go. Uh, kill, you you want to go kill? I one. might go Kalorn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they're gonna shut Panarin down. I don't know if Panarin's gonna know. get any past the old fucking Vasilevsky, but yeah. I don't know if anyone is. No, that guy looks like he's just back too. Like he looked in game the first series that he was human. So he's back. So to, we're talking Nuggets here. Over seven and a half goals tomorrow night, which yeah. this will be. You know, the the game two, Edmonton, Colorado, over seven and a half. I don't think it's been over seven and a half all year. Nope. Has it been? Nope. Has it ever been in a hockey game ever? Ever? Yeah, like 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 very rarely. Like like probably like once or twice in the past, like maybe three or four years. Um, and I think it's more so like an overcorrection of the market, right? They saw there was 14 goals last night, and so 14. they know there's going to be some goals scored. A um, couple things here, right? One, we don't know if Kemper is going to be back or if Franco is going to be in. Although Franco did look good last night. Um, but then two, Smitty, right? In game two is his postseason, so small sample size, two games. He has 1.5 goals against and a 957 save percentage. Granted, the Avalanche are probably the best offense he's facing, but I think he's he's kind of due for a bounce back. Yeah. Here. No, that's a great point by you. He's bounced back. The whole team has bounced yeah. back in game two. And yeah. Smitty will be better, 100%. That's yeah. a great point. And uh, in, for uh, so round two, the Oilers, four here. out of five games, they scored eight plus goals. Like their the total in that game was eight plus goals. And for the Avs, only two out of the five or two out of the six against St. Louis was eight plus goals. What's the under for game two? Minus what? One, you minus say? 130. I on just think with all the talk of like, when Wayne Gretzky says there's too much scoring, I think the coaches might be like, okay, we got to. And like you said about Smitty bouncing back, the Kempfer thing, and I don't know. I might take the under. I don't know. What, uh, I do have a question say. for you guys. What did what'd you make of that offsides call last night? It was the right call. Yeah. It was it, the, the, the play... And the rule is you cannot touch the puck inside the blue line while your teammate still has both feet over it. They changed the rule a couple of years ago where you can lift your foot off the ice, but you have to kind of straddle it. It needs to be seen that you're straddling the line. Until you touch the puck, there's no whistle blown. It's still delayed. It's a good goal. So yeah. if, if he fucking touches the puck as fast as Kale McCarr is and as fast as Nishuskin is coming out. The Russian train. If you touch the puck, it's offside. Whether you're looking at him or you're looking at broads in the stands or who knows where you're looking, doesn't matter. No one can tell me what Kale McCarr is yeah. doing either because you're not Kale McCarr. Yeah, this he didn't have it on a stick, so it was it was offside. I, I was uh, uh, an onside goal. What do you think? Do you think? think he did that on purpose? Do you think he knew the rule and he's just that ridiculous? No, 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 no. I don't think that. But when I, I saw it the first glance live, I go, that's offside. But then once I looked at the other angles and started to hear what they were saying, I'm like, it's, it's, it's onside. So, I mean – 
probably he's not immediately thinking about the rule, but he's probably like, oh fuck, he sees him there. Yeah, oh fuck, just him. don't touch don't it. Don't touch it. But yeah, you that's know. that's probably what he said because that kid sees the ice better than anyone. Yeah. So he could have seen him and went, I better not touch it till he tags up. I think he did do that. I mean, this theory, if you think about it, right, they probably have four of the top seven, top eight players in the entire league right now with McDavid, Dreisaitl, McKinnon, and McCarr. It's like talent over them. It's crazy. Yeah. No, the NHL's in a great spot right now. And that series yeah. that you just said, we got the two, three best players in the world, four best players, like you just said, and the other series, the two best goalies in the, in the planet. So, um, Keith, thank you very much, buddy. Uh, I might have to be texting you here for some more nuggies here offline here, fella. You seem like you know what you're talking about. So we appreciate you, everything you do for us at DraftKings. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we love DraftKings, baby. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. I know our fans awesome. will love Thanks, this, though. too. Yeah. Our fans will love this, so this is great. Thank you, Keith. Perfect, yeah. Glad to help, and uh, let's go. Let's win some money. All right, well, let's thank go, you, baby. baby. DraftKings, baby. Hey, Thanks, Keith. Keith, thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, that was very insightful. People uh, in Ontario, fucking get the app. Lots of good news. Come lots on, of baby. Good news. How much do you love the app? Love the app. Right? In fact, it kills clean. me that I'm not you know. know, being able to do it down here in California. I often sneak up to uh, the mountains to get to get a couple bets. Well, anytime we go to a state that we have it, we're always we're always firing it. Yeah, or you, you know, you connect in... Uh, in Atlanta, and I may, or, I may or may not have some people in Colorado, Denver, precisely. Yeah, you don't United. want to be talking. About that. <laughs> All right, uh, um, oh, but we got thanks to Keith. Yeah, and our boy, the fella, Matty Kachuk, love him. Thanks for taking time, and we know what it's like when you lose. And and you know, we, we got to go up and see him. Um, you know, the Calgary Flames, hell of a season. Him and Johnny Hockey, hell of a season. Yeah. Um, you know. Taking time out of his afternoon before the little golf match they're having at Old Warson. Yeah. Appreciate your time, Matty. Um, may you have a good summer. And uh, I think he's due for a new ticket, isn't he? Yeah, he's an RFA. So we we I didn't really we didn't really want to ask him that. We Hopefully thought we, we thought get about cur- it, but a little curfew, uh, little yeah. tug for him. The whole Kachuk Cur- family. I mean, they've been great to miss a curfew. Yeah. He actually texted me after he's like, I said thanks again, fella. He said Big Walt wants to come on next time. So awesome. Maybe we'll do a trip to the Lou or something. Maybe play around a golf with those boys or something. But we they've should. been great to us. So Maddie, thank you, Binger, Maxi, Hall Pass Media, and of course you, the Updog. Yeah. Great show, fell. I felt yeah. like that one was crispy. Of course. Thanks to all our sponsors. Yeah, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple, and uh, if you want to watch our handsome faces, uh, YouTube. The YouTube. And our boy Binger's got TikTok going. TikTok. How much is our TikTok, TikTok going, talk? baby? Check out our TikTok up. We got to TikTok it up. I still think you should like do a dance with Izzy on our TikTok that might go like viral. Buddy, or she, I took her to Nobu just, just quick. Put I took her, her to tic- Nobu. Just put her on, on our TikTok. Saturday night, we rode our bikes down to Nobu with the new dog. And <laughs> buddy, she had, you know, the lounge, you know, the lounge on the main, main floor. Do I ever? Christina went to the bathroom and I had Izzy there and the tunes were, Izzy the to tunes Nobu. were pumping and Izzy started like full break, like dancing, dancing. And then she was doing, she had this going and then she got on the ground with her hand on her head like this and started lifting her legs up like full stripper mode. I'm like, this is not, I did not, I did not teach my two year old daughter this move. Not a chance. I don't know what her mother's been doing with her. What's that Walker Hayes song where he says, I'm just trying to keep my daughter off the pole. That's yeah. one of his lines that Walker Hayes. Get my son out of jail. Yeah, my, my daughter off, off the pole. pole. Um, <laughs> I think you should, Izzy could be our TikTok star. I don't she know. I don't want to use your. I don't want to use your. You know, your daughter for our TikTok bloodline for, for our popularity. TikTok. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll okay. cut her in the field. Yeah, yeah, Anyways, up dog. Thank you very much, buddy. Enjoy the game tonight. That was missing curfew.